last year in Ann Arbor, Michigan and Michigan State waged a battle for the ages. The Spartans dominated the contest early. But down the stretch, it became the Braylon Edwards show. His two leaping touchdowns forced overtime. And his breakaway catch and run in the third extra session put the Wolverines ahead. And when the Spartans' final attempt fell incomplete, it was a 45-37 victory and pandemonium in the big house. A perfect day for a football game. Temperature in the mid-60s, no wind, sellout crowd, East Lansing, Michigan. The Wolverines of Michigan State. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. Talk about a role reversal. The Wolverines come in unranked. The Spartans ranked in the top 15. The Wolverines, a rare underdog against Michigan State. The Spartans are favored, and this certainly will be one of those games that will determine the outcome of the wide open Big Ten. It's doubleheader day on ABC. John Saunders will tell us about that next. ABC the Michigan Wolverines started out the year as a team many thought would come out of the Big Ten but Michigan State has survived and they have risen and risen and risen John Saunders alongside of Greg James and Aaron Taylor if you take a look at the poll you'll see exactly what I'm talking about before the start of the season Michigan was ranked number four and Michigan State was not even on the radar however after a couple of Wolverine losses and Michigan State going 4-0, they're now number 11, while Michigan is unranked. But you know, Michigan can jump up and win this game rather easily with a good performance. But they got to shut down Drew Stanton. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, you're going with Michigan big on this one here. Hey, Drew Stanton's a quarterback. That everybody's talking about it in America right now. They're saying, hey, a Heisman Trophy candidate for sure. This offense explodes because of Drew Stanton. That win against your Irish, Aaron, was incredible. The poise, the touch. He also has courage on the ground. He can run the football. And I tell you what I like about Michigan State's offense: the fact that they have scored on 16 of their first 21 offensive drives this season. They start fast. Drew Stanton starts fast, and that offense is going to be hard to deal with. I'll tell you what, uh, Drew Stanton's not the only quarterback they're talking about in the state of Michigan. They're talking about Chad Henney as well, and the things they're saying aren't very nice. But it's not on all on Henney's shoulders. you got to remember, he lost tight end Tim Massaqua and running back Michael Hart very early on. Those are uh, two players at two positions that a quarterback needs. Then you fold into that offensive line injuries. Then on top of that, you have a Braylon Edwards, a uh, Braylon Edwards, John's favorite player, mm -hmm. uh, list receiver core, and you have a lot of pressure on a young quarterback back that didn't have that before so Michigan right now struggling two and two struggling for his yep. Big Ten life there's pressure all over the place today and we'll be following some of it at noon this game right now on ESPN Frank Beamer and Virginia Tech I happen to think they're the second best team in the nation a little better than Texas but boy a test at West Virginia and then in the Big 12 Missouri laying in wait for Vince Young and Texas, even though they're the number two team in the nation. And I know, Craig, you think today somebody's going down. Virginia Tech, baby. <laughs> Your Virginia Techers are going. You better watch it. Alabama, Nebraska, and Penn State all undefeated, but we'll see how good they are today. It's going to be an extremely difficult, very interesting day. We will see you at halftime. It's Michigan State and Michigan. How about Great day for a little tailgating prior to the Battle of Michigan. Big question with the Wolverines running back Mike Hart working out before they went in to put the pads on. What do you hear down below, Jack Aroot? Well, Brent, that pregame warm-up was so critical. Offensive coordinator Terry Malone looked Mike Hart over and at the end of the warm-up said, well, are you ready? Mike Hart winked back and said, I'm all ready. Always ready for Michigan State. He will start today. All right, Jack, thank you with my partner. Gary Danielson, another story involving Michigan. Steve Bruston can't go today because of a shoulder injury. You know, Brent, uh, of the two stories, I think Steve Bruston, you never want to lose a football player. You know that. But, you know, the, he's replaceable. They have some guys in depth at wide receiver. I think Mike Hart is more important to this offense for a few reasons. He doesn't turn the ball over. He's a better receiver, and he's a better pass protector. That should make Chad Henney a better player. What about Drew Stanton, the all-everything quarterback at Michigan State? There's no tougher player in college football defense right now than Drew Stanton. 
with his legs and his arm. He is an emerging superstar in college football. You know, there's been one problem for the Wolverine defense dating back to last year at Ohio State. Yeah, it really has. It started with Drew Stanton against Michigan State, and it went from there. Troy Smith, Ohio State, showed that a mobile quarterback in a spread offense gave them problems. We saw it in the Rose Bowl with Vince Young, and then, ironically enough, last week, Wisconsin and John Stucco, he scores the winning touchdown. Michigan State won the toss and folks they did not defer that's a story to begin with they said let us have the football with this high powered attack and they will come out on the 20 yard line so we have been talking about number five Drew Stanton and he has really emotional feelings about playing Michigan Garrett you know he, he grew up not liking Michigan and you know Brent sometimes there's an inferiority complex at Michigan State not with this guy playing quarterback he doesn't like him and he's told his whole team he's the leader the first play they script eight prior to the game and they will open up with that shotgun look as you look down on this gorgeous Saturday here in East Lansing not a seat to be had both bands are here and on first down the offensive line gives Stanton plenty of time can't find an open receiver dancing and finally at the 21 yard line the completed pass to Terry Love the sophomore wide out so the Ameriprise starting lineup and here are the fellows who have been making it happen. Brandon Teague, one of three running backs, Wood, Scott, and Brown for the Spartans. Uh -huh. Behind this offensive line, and this may be the most underrated offensive line in the Big Ten, it is anchored by Chris Morris. He is the all-everything center. From the deep eye here on second and long, they come back with the running attack probing the middle of this Wolverine defense at three may up front Allen Branch has made a huge huge difference for the Wolverines Gabe Watson of course will get a lot of playing time the four linebackers and Lamar Woodley number 56 the Michigan State coaches charted all the games they've got to keep an eye on him Paul Berenger Engelman and Mason in that backfield the bad news is Mason leads the Wolverines in tackles you don't like to see that from a cornerback they stack three wide at the bottom of your screen on third down, Stanton rolls in that direction. Fires a diving reception, first down, Michigan State, as Stanton converts his first third down, hitting Jeremy Scott from Jupiter, Florida. Drew Stanton is like the ugly duckling who's turned into the beautiful swan as a thrower. You see him, you will never know from snap to snap where he's going to throw the football from. He came to Michigan State as a passer. He turned into a runner, and now he's a passer again. What a developing superstar. 18 yards throwing, puts the ball on the 43-yard line. Stanton with an empty backfield. Look at the offensive line. Plenty of time, middle, incomplete, through high. So, John L. Smith, the uh, coach, was talking about uh, the, the team and what he's putting on the field, and especially Stanton's makeup. He's a tough guy. You, you know, he's a, he's a linebacker type guy. He's a guy that you want leading your team, and he's not afraid to grab a face mask and, and shake a head or two. And that's what we like to see. He has indeed provided leadership as well as quarterback skill as he rolls the pocket to the left, now dancing away from trouble, trying to avoid the sack, and he is down. Could not get out of the way as Pat Massey, the senior, 283-pound senior, number 94, in for the Wolverines. That's a loss of 13 yards on the sack. You know, Michigan has kind of mixed it up here with their defense early in this football game, rushing three players on first down on both of the first downs, but on second and third down, coming with four guys. That time, Lamar Woodley turned that play back in, and the Michigan secondary is very, very comfortable covering right now. Let's see if that stands up. On this substitution package, Massey off to the sideline. There's the 3 4 look Gary referred to. They keep a protector for Stanton, and now they send him out into the pattern. And again, the receivers are well covered. Fires middle, got him complete. At midfield, Stanton comes back and finds the wideout Kyle Brown, the senior who has been so efficient. Number three for the Spartans. 
And that is short of the first down. Yeah, it will Michigan's bring up a fourth a down. Deep zone that time, and this is the first time I think, Brent, that Steve Preston will have a bigger factor in the punt game and special teams. Brandon Fields drills the punt. Leon Hall, and it goes out of bounds. They were practicing this Steve Preston punt. And even without him on the field, they go for the boundary, out of bounds, a terrific punt by Fields, a 49-yarder out of bounds. So Chad Henney and the Wolverines will have very difficult field position. Now, what about Henney's sophomore prop? Well, look at this. If you look behind his statistics a little bit more, at first glance, they're pretty good. But if you break them down between the first half and the second half, you can clearly see he's struggling in the second half. You cannot be a championship football team with a quarterback who struggles in the second half. So Mike Hart, after that warm-up that Jack Root told us about, is opening as the tailback. From the two-yard line. Immediately Hart. And he may have got half a yard. And here's our Ameriprise lineup. So when the season began, this the big three. No Breston here today. Hart went down earlier with an injury, but we don't have Breston oh, in my the lineup. Fault on that one, the wrong guy. I'm sorry there, Brett. <laughs> Chad Henney, of course, uh, has been slumping. Ecker and Massacoy, the two tight ends. Avant and Mario Manningham, a freshman wideout. One at INT for GD. From the blank, up above Henney. Firing complete, and he brings it out beautifully. Close to a first down is Carl Tab, number 17. Let's see how they spot it. It'll be just short. He's going to have to pick up a yard here on. Uh, you can see the distance that they still have to go here for the first down. The yellow marker on your screen. And he breaks the huddle for the Wolverine. Four man defensive front. Hart for the first down. Breaks free. Cuts to open field. 40 45. 50 and run down at the 44 yard line. Mike Hart making a difference before the sophomore bandit linebacker, Sir Darian Adams, number 27, tracked him down a 45 yard gain. And right up the middle of the Michigan State defense, it had almost eight, nine guys up there. Look at the end of this play, though. Did Mike Hart kind of favor that hamstring at the end? Watch right at the end of this thing. If he doesn't kind of blow a tire there, let's watch that at the end of the play. Kevin Grady checks into the game. And, and I think the coaches might have saw that also. A terrific block at the line of scrimmage by Hennigy. Number 65, Leo Hennigy, sprung that play open. Now the freshman. Grady will see his first action, and he will put it in the air on first down, and he gets it outside to Mario Manningham, the six-foot freshman, and the coaches think he has a tremendous upside. He runs patterns, Gary, they say, as well as anybody on the Wolverine roster. Well, there's no doubt if you watch this guy in warm-ups, he just looks like a wide receiver, comfortable running routes, and that play right there is just between the receiver and the quarterback. If the defense plays off too far, Henny will just look out there, make eye contact, and throw the ball. The other nine players do not know it's a pass. Here's Henny on that long handoff and Hart back on the field. You know, we asked Chad Henny, Jack Root traveled to Ann Arbor last Monday, the mood of this team with those two losses. Right now, we're down. I mean, uh, we're not where we want to be right now. Uh, but we're going to work our hardest to get uh, where we need to be. But a couple of things have given Henny and the Wolverines an early lift. Number one, especially, is Mike Hart, who rolled through on that 45-yard gain. There didn't seem to be an injury problem. They took him out for a breather. Now it is second down and nine. Antonio Bass, another of the youngsters they like on this team, and they will show motion with Bass going through the formation. And he's firing very accurately for another first down and he hits Tyler Ecker the tight end and uh, John what's happening with uh, the Longhorns and Missouri down in Austin my friend 
Well, Fred, here in the Taco Bell update, it didn't take the Longhorns very long after an interception. Jamal Charles just goes three yards in for the touchdown. Second rank Longhorns on the board with a seven to nothing lead right out of the gate. Brent, back to you. John, I apologize. I thought that game was in Austin, uh, obviously in Missouri, and the Horns go ahead, so we'll be checking in with you. Here we are in the red zone now for the Wolverines, and here's Henny firing too high, and he didn't have Braylon Edwards down there to catch yeah. that one. Jason Avant, uh, the 6'1 senior, I, I think back to that classic, classic game in Ann Arbor a year ago when Braylon Edwards went airborne. And here now, is uh, that offensive line and we stopped talked about Hennigy number 65 remember now they were without Jake Long perhaps for the season although he has not been ruled out Riley Lynch Krause Hennigy and Stenovich coming together now as a group second down and 10 for Henning four down linemen actually they stand up on the right side of the defense and they blitz linebacker blitz hit throws into it a beautiful read by the quarterback and Avon a possession receiver from Carver High School in Chicago to the 11 yard line now defensively and this is a group that has to prove itself Brandon McKinney he drew a start the coaches thought he was overweight a year ago they trimmed him down to a svelte 313 Clifton Ryan is the big man in that group there are your linebackers David Heron Jr. once was the fullback in high school for Maurice Corrette. Henny is way out here on this play. Antonio Bass is the quarterback. And he picked it up. So Antonio Bass runs for the first down on the little bit of trickery yep. by the Wolverines as Lloyd Carr and the staff decide to empty out the playbook. And it was a great call because if a running quarterback gives you cover for trouble, you take a former high school quarterback, Bass, and put him in at that same spot to get the first down. This is a big message for the Spartan defense. This Absolutely. drive started back on the two-yard line, and they have driven all the way to the Spartan two-yard line. Now Hart is back on the field. It would be a big lift for the Wolverines if they can score in their first drive. Got it. Avon, touchdown, Michigan. Working the corner of the end zone against the small defensive backs for the Spartans. And now Michigan serves notice. They're an underdog and they're unranked, but they're not quite dead yet. Too many weapons on this drive for Michigan. And when you're throwing the ball the way Chad Henney was anticipated to throw the ball this year, and Avant the way he can catch the ball, you know that Michigan's offense is still tough to stop. Aaron Reedus hammers home the extra point for Michigan. Matt Gutierrez is holder, and here is the touchdown as we head for a break. Michigan State off a terrific punt. Thought they had the Wolverines sealed up back on their own two yard line, but they drove 98 yards. And now Diego Okendo will let this one go deep in the end zone, take a knee. It'll come out again on the 20. So Ross Ryan kicking off very well here. And college football on ABC is brought to you by Jeep, the all new 2006 Jeep Commander. It's your world. Take command. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottle. Dr. Pepper, one taste, and you get it. And Capital One, what's in your wallet? You couldn't ask for a nicer day for a football game here, folks, than what we've got in East Lansing. And uh, Stanton comes back out with the offense. Remember last year, these two battled through three overtimes before Braylon Edwards put the Wolverines ahead in that third overtime. And now Drew Stanton and the Spartans need to answer the bell. That inside handoff, and they're going to try to run a little bit downhill with the freshman, Javon Rio. Well, if you look at these two teams, what they need to do, I think it's a little bit of the same. They do not want to have a lot of third and longs. Protect the quarterback a little bit different. In the pocket for Henny, and they don't want Stanton to take a lot of hits. And come on, we all know that in the Michigan-Michigan State team game, the team that runs the ball effectively wins it. So far, Michigan has got off that running game. You have looked down on one of our great settings in all of college football. The offensive line doing its job. Can Stanton find open men? Through to double coverage that time, and it was almost picked off by Grant Mason, the senior cornerback 
there were two defenders back there as Stanton fired it to Gary up early I know you watching the defensive backs but it looks to me like the Michigan State receivers have been well covered they have it's been a lot of zone so far from this Michigan defensive backs I think this is a busted route this time the receiver keeps going and uh, Drew Stanton throws it in the slot that's a miscommunication from this wide open spread offense but Allen Branch Brett number 80 was right in Stanton's face again the state coaches to a man said this would be the best defense they've played so far this year Drew Stanton has to dance again. About the third time he's been on the run, sacked once, gets away from pressure. Can he throw it away? Dropped. But it's an incomplete. There's a penalty flag. A penalty flag thrown there on the sideline. Boy, they, I think they might have called this on Behringer, number 19, as a late hit, but I think that's questionable. Behringer doesn't know that that's going to be a drop ball on that play. Let's see if they pick it up. Matt Trannon. Their basketball player and the wideout dropped it on the sideline, and uh, he'd been enjoying his best season right, so far today. But he certainly should have hung on to that ball. Pick that as up. our referee now, Dennis Lipsky. There is no foul on the play. That's good call by the crew. You can see Trannon is the guy as Drew Stanton again is forced to do too much on this play. This offense does not work like this. Give Michigan's defensive line credit. Trannon is open. He's 6'6". It's a perfect throw. And you can see it was called a late hit, but I think that's a great pickup. They are having a hard time. The Spartans are blocking Lamar Woodley. And a low returnable punt. Brandon Fields is scooped up by Leon Hall, who has replaced Bruston, who's out with an injury. And the Wolverines are going to have superb field position. So the underdog, folks, is howling loudly right now in East Lansing. Beware a wounded Michigan, at least so far. Of two amigos. Gary Danielson, Jack Aroot, I'm Brent Musburger. Just a great, great set. If you like to go to different ballparks, folks, to see a college football game, come by East Lansing. They've done a great job remodeling this uh, arena. They lowered the playing surface. Not a bad seat in the house. Very intimate. Just a beautiful place. Mike Hart, who gave the Wolverines a huge lift with that 45-yarder, back in at running back. And here he comes again, trying to swing to the right. And... Uh, Jack, I know you've been uh, talking to Coach uh, Malone down there. He means a lot to this team. Yeah, and I asked him, was it his production as a as a running back? He said no. He said every time that Mike Hart comes into the game, there's a spark on the offensive line, a spark in the secondary, even a spark from Chad Henney. Maybe it's because Henney and Hart were so magical one year ago with a little help from Braylon Edwards. He said that's why I wanted to get him in the starting lineup. Not for his production as much, for his spark. How about that? Yeah, that, that's, that's amazing. Key too. You know, Michigan hasn't fumbled a lot, but two key fumbles have cost them losses. Yes, they have. Big time fumble. Play fake by Henny. Pocket holds. Fires. Touchdown. Will walk in this time. It's Mario Manningham, the freshman. 43 yards. This is a stunned Spartan Stadium. Two positions and two touchdowns. And hail to the victors. Safety fight on the play right up there. Free safety's on the middle of the field. You got one on one to the outside. There's Manningham right there. What a route runner. Watch him patient inside. That's way too easy. And that's exactly why Notre Dame was able to throw for 487 yards against the secondary. Terrace puts it down for Revis. And folks, there's one way to take a crowd out. You hear it all the time. It's a cliche, but Lloyd Carr and the Wolverines have done just that. It's 14-0, the underdog, Michigan leads. 7.03 to go, and Michigan has silenced the Michigan State faithful, at least for the time being, folks. It's a long, long way to go. Devon Williams, the corner who was not out there defending, will return this kickoff. He's the deep man, but you're not getting any returns against the Wolverines. Wolverines are executing beautifully in all phases. And Gary, another tough day for number 31. Yeah, Deron Hayes. Now watch his hips, everyone, on this play right here. He's okay. He's okay. Up right there. When he turns his hips, 
Manningham is very patient on the route. When he turns his hips, he is beat. It's a perfect throw, an easy throw on the post. And Manningham, a freshman, I said, he's a very good route runner, really turned around Jerron Hayes. Well, I go back to last year. Braylon Edwards beat on Jerron Hayes. He has dreamed of having this game. Uh, he was suspended for a time for John L. Smith. Now he gives up that touchdown to Manningham. And Michigan State finally sets the screen with the freshman ringer. And Ringer is down at the 25 yard line, so it'll be second down and about five. Now, what the Spartans have to be here, Gary, they have to be patient. They can't allow themselves to get two down, and you say number five will not let them get that no, far. No, and, and as a quarterback, you got to tell your team right now that, listen, we're going to score points. I'm telling you, we're going to score points. Cathead, he's got me right now. Start off fast. Give me some time. I need to have that line blocked a little bit, and we'll find some holes in that secondary. Using 39 ringer again, the five foot nine inch freshman Dave Harris, the linebacker That's who steps who up like. in there, and this is a uh, this is an improved defensive yep. front for the uh, Wolverines. We all remember what Vince Young and the Longhorns did to them in the uh, in the Rose Bowl. Now number 56 so far. I see the big Gabe Watson is out there. He didn't start along with Massey, but there, folks is a star waiting to happen number 56 and everybody who plays the Wolverine tries to chart where they're going to put him and they move him around from spot to spot so you can see as he sits down on this third down conversion he'll try to get a rush on Stanton off the play fake great time fires first down complete to Kyle Brown the senior wideout. And uh, John, what's happening uh, with Missouri? Well, Brent, we told you that Texas scored quickly. Missouri marched the ball right back down the field. And Jimmy Jackson finishes the job with a 12-yard carry. So Texas defense gives up the touchdown early, and it's tied up at seven apiece. Brent. Yeah, so far, the underdog's doing pretty well, John, here in both arenas. 14-0 huh? here, Michigan leading. They'll run the toss play on first down and uh, nothing doing. You can see the Wolverine defense. Alan Branch, the 311 pound sophomore, was amongst that group. He has made a huge difference in this defensive game. Yes, front. and Alan Branch and Gabe Watson are both in the game. That's the look that Michigan State anticipated. You can anticipate it all you want, it's tough to block it. And that time he ran right through the block by Nobelski. And that is the type of push that Branch is giving this defense. With the added speed at linebacker for Michigan, this is a good Big Ten defense this year. Now, J.U. Kulkrick, the big back, has checked in. Dropped, and that is another drop. This one by Kyle Brown. Matt Trannon, remember, dropped one on the sideline. And, of course, this is the first half of our doubleheader. Coming up next, the ADT spotlight game. And most of you will see USC against Arizona State. And then the rest of you, Minnesota Penn State Iowa State Nebraska Syracuse against Florida State all coming up after our early games here on ABC Michigan State is very tight you know the expectations is what create pressure and in this football game the expectations are that Michigan State would roll it up you can see that this football team is not used to it Stanton rolling the pocket to the left turns completely around fires deep middle Donovan complete and he puts it back in Jeremy Scott's hands and that will be a first down in Wolverine territory and now for the first time the Spartans are mounting a serious scoring threat watch Drew Stanton he looks left he looks back to his right then he comes down the middle of the field keeps his feet moving and delivers the ball that's a quarterback it's not pretty I'll guarantee you he's not a pretty thrower but he's used to this offense and he's delivering the ball he's playing better than his teammates right now Stanton is thrown for 87 yards and Henny for 85 Jason Teague is back in he gets the toss stayed outside cuts first down and banged at the 18 yard line by Brandon Engelman the junior safety up to get Jason Teague he's the senior of the three headed running back trio when we talked to the Michigan State coaches yesterday and Thursday, they said they felt they were going to probe this Michigan defense inside out. That has not worked. You can see already that Michigan State has changed, and they're going outside. And here's a little change up. 
Stanton now is out in the flank, and a different person is in at quarterback. I'm not sure who it's it is. Jeremy yet. Scott. Yep. And Scott from Dwyer High School in South Florida carries it from that shotgun look. So what's good for the goose is good for the yep. gander. And Berenger making the stop for the Wolverines, but the Spartans are now marching toward the end zone. You know, that's how important Drew Stanton is to this football team. A year ago, they would have put Stanton in to run that play, but now they don't want him taking a lot of shots, so they make the switch and put in the receiver to run the quarterback draw. Now first and goal. Banging straight ahead with the big back. Cole Crick, 245 pounds of running back there, number 30, folks. And the coaches all week long were hopeful here at East Lansing that they could get Cole Crick into the game and start to run downhill. They said he has not played up to his potential. And I'm somewhat surprised now that they take him out, but I suppose it depends on whatever play they have called here from the four-yard line as the Spartans have marched better than 70 yards. They trail it by two touchdowns. This would lift the spirits considerably in East Lansing. Here's the running quarterback. Five touchdown. Drew Stanton, who when he couldn't quarterback this team, volunteered for the punt coverage unit. You could see his aggressiveness as he dove to the end zone. Power off tackle with the quarterback. This is the old wing team football. Just run the ball right at you. What a football player. Made the mental decisions, delivered the ball, and ran the ball into the end zone like a fullback. That's what I mean. And ran right over a Michigan defender to get in there. We have an injured player down on the team, down on the field right now. John Goss awaits the attempt for the uh, extra point. There's the training staff. There's there's the hero, the cover boy here in East Lansing, the 6'3 junior, Harrison High School in Farmington Hills, Michigan. I mentioned that punt coverage, folks. In an Alamo Bowl game against Nebraska, he was hit from the back, suffered a major knee injury, and that prior to the start of last season. But you can watch the aggressiveness here. End zone, here I come. And the injured player is Prescott Burgess, He's the junior outside linebacker and uh, appears to be all right. He was shaken up on the play. Well, and now it'll be John Goss on to attempt the uh, the extra point here with uh, Chris Morris. The regular center will snap it. And Everyone figured it would take check that four Brandon touchdowns. Will be, the, will be the hold. Perfect. So it's a one touchdown game and uh, just what you said it's going to be a long I thought, day for both defenses. Absolutely. I thought they had to do it and they did score. Timeout at East Lansing. How much does Spartan quarterback Drew Henson dislike the Michigan Wolverines but when the EA Sports NCAA 06 football game came out he saw Desmond Howard Heisman Trophy winner from Michigan out. What did he do? He tore off and now he just plays with the black box. Jack, it's in the game. <laughs> so there is Stanton. He's put the Spartans on the board. Gave this crowd a huge lift. And the Wolverines, in case you just joined us, are without Preston. Carl Tabb and Grant Mason. There's Tabb, number 17, back deep. Dr. Goss is the kickoff man here, fielded by Tab. Looking for a seam. Out at the 30-yard line. Gary, how about the cheap rushing playbook? Well, we talked about Mike Hart and how important he was to be able to run the football, but he needed some help. That offensive line blew him off, and Brian Thompson, watch the fullback. He gets manned up, and they just run ISO. That's an old bow play. ISO right up it. Right up Michigan State, and Michael Hart gets to the outside and makes a big running play. The biggest rushing play of the year for Michigan. Pressure is on this Spartan defense, folks. Michigan is averaging better than 12 yards a play so far in this game. They've outrushed them 65-25. The corners have been under pressure. 
And the corner's backing way off. They just put it in the freshman's hands. And that time, Ashton Watson, the senior corner. But you can see how soft the cushion is on your screen. Henny sees that, and he just flips it to the wide out. And that time, he picked up three yards. Well, aerial coverage for the game, courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse Airship Bloom and Onion. The Outback Steakhouse Airship specializes in college football and PGA golf coverage. Looking for the Bloom and Onion one at sporting events throughout the year. Henny is under center. There's the shift. They package the wide outs and they'll run behind them this time. Mike Hart jammed up a little bit. And the Spartans very aggressive that time at the point of attack. Now I know if you're a, a Michigan fan, you're looking at that secondary and going, why are we even wasting a running play here? Because that Michigan secondary is very vulnerable out there. Their corners cannot cover man to man, meaning they're going to have to drop additional people. I still think you got to give them a taste of the run to keep them honest. But right now, Chad Hitty's looking over and saying, let me throw. I can do it all day. Inside of a minute and a half here in the opening quarter, Michigan 14, Michigan State 7. Third down and five, and now Henny will go airborne. Fired back. Incomplete ball should have been caught. It was dropped that time by Tim Massacoy, and of course there's a reason why. He has, you can see what right hand broke the wrist, and there is no question about it with that cast on his right arm that that affected his catching ability and certainly gives him an excuse. He wouldn't use it, but uh, he's normally very reliable on a pass like that. Fourth down and five now. Ross Ryan. Kyle Brown is back deep for the spot. Fair catch at the 34-yard line. So with a minute to go. In the opening quarter. Well, when you're having a great offense, game. no matter where you get the football, you're scoring. Now, I admit, not a lot of great teams they've played so far, but this team doesn't even kick a lot of field goals. They've been just putting touchdowns on the board and have not gotten the ball with a turnover inside the 20 to start this season through these uh, games and into the Big Ten. J.U. Culcrick now checks in. He's number 30 at the running back. This is what they eventually, the Spartan coaches, wanted to get to against this defensive front. And there it is. That's what they were looking for. Downhill. And Kulkrick powers across the 45-yard line. That, folks, is a big part of the game plan. 22 yards for him. Dave Baldwin, the offensive coordinator upstairs, got to him. And up front, that offensive line is experienced led by Chris Morris, their center number 51. He got a little handful of shirt that time on the Michigan defender, Harris, but no call, no harm, and that time Michigan State runs the ball right up the gut of that defense. Now Ringer, the freshman, he's more of the outside, the dash youngster. There's the play fake to him by Stanton. Draws complete Kyle Brown. And the Spartans are on the move again with this wide open, high powered offense. What a beautifully designed play by Michigan State that time. They faked the counter. Watch him fake the counter. And then Chris goes right down. Kyle Brown goes right down to the middle of the hashes, sets, and another strike by Drew Stanton. He's a baseball pitcher. We heard that. And he is delivering nothing but strikes. They put Scott in the backfield alongside the quarterback. They toss it to Jeremy. Looking to throw it. Fires it down. Intercepted at the goal line and then fumbled. Michigan has the ball if they call possession. If they call the clean intercept, back on the one, but they seem to be jumping in there, waving it off. Incomplete. I agree with Lloyd. I thought it was a clean interception well, on the one yard line. Berenger was the player. I thought he fumbled and Michigan re recovered. However, we will take another look at it because sometimes the first impression's the wrong one. 
Dwayne Holmes, number 81, comes from behind. Remember, the official will err on the side of a fumble. One, two steps, he clearly knocks it up. Reviewable, of course, and the officials will err on the side of a incomplete pass because they can change it. But that one was clearly in possession of the Michigan player that time, Berenger. Nothing has been stopped, and there it is. A whistle down on the field. Jim Augustine, an outstanding replay official, is up next to us, and Michigan wants to give him more time to take a look at this. From that view, it appeared as though he had the interception with the ball in the right hand. Now, just to throw another little fact in here, Brent, though, if the whistle blew as an incomplete pass, it's a dead ball. It cannot be reviewed. So if the official is saying it's an incomplete pass right there and blows his whistle, he cannot review this because the whistle would have blown. You would think that Dennis Lipsky would be over on the phone telling them that immediately if that had been the case, Gary. However, with the timeout, he clearly Lloyd had. Carr and Michigan have given Jimmy Augustine a moment to look at that replay. Yeah. Well, he clearly had the football. So now you question whether the whistle was blown and was it reviewable? They are going over to the Michigan sideline and uh, explaining to them. Previous play is being reviewed. Good timeout by Lloyd Carr. He wants it. It's a huge play. That was a big timeout because John L. Smith had the Spartans at the line of scrimmage and ready to go again. And uh, now we will have Dennis Lipsky. He'll come over and talk to Jim Augustine. And uh, let me remind you of uh, this is gee, just such a terrific day in uh, college football. There's the primetime game uh, on ESPN. The Fighting Irish in Purdue. Gary, uh, you were a long time a member of that rivalry with the uh, with the Boilermakers. Uh, that has meaning here in the Midwest. It sure does. Both teams have only lost has been in overtime this year to Michigan State, of course, and Purdue to Minnesota still undefeated. Let's hope, in my mind, that this gets reversed because I think clearly in my mind Michigan intercepted this ball let's hope the whistle didn't blow to change this he has it he tucks it away and gets it knocked away I in my mind for fairness I hope this gets reviewed uh, the Return. replay booth is uh, is upstairs and again uh, it's right off uh, right off in here yeah. is where Jimmy Augustine is looking at it right over there because he's running the replays uh, back and forth and uh, taking a uh, closer look I dare say Gary if there had been a whistle they, they would have told him about that right away they would not have even gone to replay because it uh, it would have been dead and incomplete right. but if it the only other call Brent that it could have been was incomplete pass and if that was the call the official should have blown the whistle. I saw the back judge run up to about the 20 yard line after the recovery of the uh, fumble now if you will if uh, Michigan had the ball and he was waving incomplete pass almost immediately in the sequence we've got four seconds to go just to give you a quick review of course there's no coaches protest uh, Michigan under no circumstance will get this timeout back uh, it is up to the replay official up here in the booth he has to check every play in the game I think it is somewhat misleading and I suppose I'm as responsible as any other announcer we say that's being replayed well everything's being replayed in the way it has uh, been drawn up uh, it has to be indisputable evidence up here in the booth for uh, Augustine Lloyd Carr he's offering indisputable evidence on the field <laughs> he's talking to Harris and the officials and I, and I think he's what he's telling <laughs> Harris to get out there lobby but the one thing you got to tell your defense if it goes against you get ready to play don't have a letdown yeah you know we, we talked to Lloyd about uh, getting emotional on the sideline with the officials here's what he said sometimes uh, uh, it gets emotional, but uh, I don't. I don't think it's anything that uh, is a lot of fun most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. I don't think Lloyd is finding this fun right now most of the time. But he's given a pretty good lecture down there. Uh, on the, he'll, he'll give the official a shave and a haircut. <laughs> but uh, but I agree with Gary. I, I thought from the naked eye clearly that the ball had been intercepted on the one and then a fumble. And well, the crowd a little bit restless about this wait right now. It's taking so long exactly, I think, because of the question about the whistle. Because to me, it's indisputable that it was a fumble. Now the whistle has to be factored into it. Now they also have to get the spot where the ball was recovered, you know. 
The ball had been taken back to the line of scrimmage for the Spartans, so they would have to also identify Yard where line. the Wolverines would get the ball. Now this is this is a, a very long discussion. Dennis Lipsky, uh, one of the fine uh, Big Ten officials down on the field. Uh, the, the key really is to get things like this right, and uh, we talked to Lipsky about it before the game, and every official agrees with that. There is indisputable video evidence that showed Michigan intercepted the pass and then fumbled the ball and then recovered the ball. It's Michigan's ball, first and 10, 13 yard line. You cannot argue with that. Nope. And remember that Lloyd Carr was burned by instant replay in the Notre Dame game when clearly his quarterback, Chad Henney, had fumbled and the Irish came away with it. Now, John L. Smith, it's uh, probably his turn to be in that, but it was a good call. No, John, John L. Smith, I just read his lips. He said, that whistle blew before the ball was recovered. That's all he was arguing, not that whether it was intercepted or not. He said, that whistle blew, and that's the question, but it turned out the way it is. The whistle blew before the. Oh, I don't want to get into it. It still didn't rule off the interception. The interception counts, and the ball is out on the 13 yard line, and we'll move on now. Chad Hitty, four down linemen for the Spartans. They trail it only by seven. And Hitty gets protection. Deep right, got an open Avod. The very sure handed wide receiver pulls in another one as we come to the end of the first quarter. So the underdog Wolverine. Travel to East Lansing. Avon has already scored one of their two touchdowns. Chad Henney is off to a strong start. The Spartans are digging in. We got a great one brewing in the Big Ten. You're watching college football on ABC Sports Championship Television. 65 degrees, a little heated neighborhood rivalry with Jack Aroot and Gary Danielson. I'm Brett Musburger. Already a little controversy here unfolding. Uh, Wolverines with a first and 10 at the 36 yard line after instant replay, in our opinion, got it absolutely right. Incomplete now, it'll be a second half. Ten. So, Gary, after that really strong start by the Wolverines now, the Spartans are digging back in, but that's a big turnover down to the goal line. It is, but if you look at the story of the football game so far, in my opinion, Chad Henney is throwing the ball confidently. Right. And this offense for Michigan, everybody said, what's wrong, what's wrong? Well, when your quarterback doesn't play well against Notre Dame and doesn't play well against Wisconsin, you don't win. It's as simple as that. Today he is playing well. We know he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And of course, uh, keep in mind what Gary showed you at the top of the game. He's had good first halves. That has not been unusual. And uh, we'll see how he uh, performs in the second half today. Second down and 10. Pocket gives him time. Goes middle. Great grab. Great. Under duress at the 35-yard line. Tyler Ecker, the tight end. So they stay away from Massacoy that time. And uh, let's check in New York. Here's John Saunders. John. Brent, Texas and Missouri trading touchdowns by their quarterbacks. Vince Young, 33 yards. Look at the separation from the secondary. That made it 14-7. And then Brad Smith from three yards out. A quick dart. He's in the end zone. They missed the point after, so it's 14-13. Brent. Yeah, John, two good early games. Huh? Here it's 14-7. And Henny Antonio Bass, another of the young Wolverine wideouts. Here comes Hart trying to stretch that defense. Made the most of it as he stays on his feet while the bandit linebacker, Sir Darian Adams, runs him out of bounds. You know, Sir Darian Adams, number 27. Take, uh, take a look at him on this play. You bet. First it was Caleb Thornhills at the point of attack. Number 43 plays it nicely, but watch Hart. Uses the straight arm and then gets to the next level for Adams to force Hart out of bounds. Didn't gain much. That's a win for that Michigan State defense. Gary, I love uh, Sir Darian Adams' mother. Said, you know, that's three separate names, folks. Sir Darian Adams, okay? Said, I want my son to have some respect. <laughs> But sir, right on the flutter. Second down and nine. 14 7 for Henny, and the Wolverines on the move again. Fires sideline, got the first down there. Anthony Avant, the leading receiver in the Big Ten, a one time basketball star at Carver High School in Chicago, and uh, already scored one touch. So Jason Avant coming out. 
Watch it. Henny in the smaller box. Avon, look at the cushion. No one near Avon on that play. The ball is thrown again accurately. Chad Henny. Michigan fans are saying, oh, look, if you could have done that against Notre Dame, if you could have done that against Wisconsin, now you're doing it. Well, well. There are no do-overs. <laughs> First down and 10. Ball's at the 20-yard line. Hart is hit. Keeps driving and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Man, the first man could not bring him down. That was Sir Darian Adams, the bandit. And uh, he just uh, he had trouble wrestling down. Mike Hart and David Heron has to finish up. Yeah, and, and that's a, a point there, though, that the Michigan coaches are going to take note. Okay, you're moving the ball. You get the ball to the 20-yard line. And what does Michigan State do? Bring the blitz on that play. Michigan's going to say, all right. You know, we'll try to run against you, but anytime we want to, I think we can go out wide and throw that post or post corner if you're Michigan. Second down and 10 is Henny. Off to his strongest start of the year. Using heart. And of course, you know, the quarterback is like the head coach. He's criticized by everybody. And uh, Jack asked Chad, uh, do you pay attention to the criticism on talk radio? from high school I never read a, a piece of newspaper anything in the internet don't listen to the news and uh, that's why you got to keep it I mean be calm ignore what they're saying about you and just go out and play your best big smile on his face right now because things are going his way he had to hear what the Michigan State Steve buddy had to say for him to him though and overrated was the was the nicest of what they chanted prior to this game good defense that time the penetration by David Heron Jr. What an interesting story uh, Heron is. Wow. David Heron, who was the blocking fullback for Maurice Claret in high school, made to switch to the linebacker, and you see him stuff that play. Now, does Michigan go for this? And again, three straight running plays as you see this ball get stuffed right there into the line of scrimmage. They're going to kick it, I think, Gary. Yeah, I know. And I, don't, aren't you a little curious with that play calling by Michigan right there as easy as they've been able to score with the passing game? Three straight runs, and that gives Michigan State a chance to make a stop. So Revis, there's Gutierrez. It's fourth and short. Gutierrez, the backup quarterback, 28-yarder. On the hash, they'll take the points. Penalty. Penalty. Penalty flag is down. That'll be a first down. They only needed about a yard. Well, that's that would a make big it first mistake. down and goal. Big mistake. Keeps it alive, so the Wolverines will take the three off the board here, leading 14-7. I think it was Ashton Watson, number 12, that came around the corner and watch him just get the feet, just the toes, and Revis falls that over. Oh, that that's cheap. Yeah, there's no doubt. But don't put yourself in that position to let the official make the call. First, Revis got one for Michigan there. First penalty of the game. And it'll be first and goal. Never really, really hit his legs, hit his toes. <laughs> look at uh, John Ellis look Parkin. At Shouldn't have been there. Michigan State was in a defense safe on that play, and Ashton came a little too aggressively and put himself in position to have a penalty call. Red zone defense here now. They've given up nine touchdowns and 12 trips against them. Not good. One on one to the bottom of the screen again. Thompson with the fullback. Looking at it. Fires incomplete. And Avon, the intended receivers, and defended by Watson as we check in again with John. Brent Marcus Vick is doing just about everything today. This time, a nine yard pass to Jeff King. He's eight of nine for 100 yards. He's thrown for a touchdown. He's run for a touchdown. And Virginia Tech leads West Virginia 17 7, Brent. John, I think South Florida is going to make an easy S poll. 14 7. About 12 minutes to go here in the first half. Came out toward the line of scrimmage. Here is Hart. It's stacked up. The Michigan State front blew the play up. Heron and Michael Bazemore, the defensive end. He's only 270 pounds, number 40, but he was in there. Might want to know what happened on the play before with Avon and the quarterback. This is a read route. The quarterback can either get a slant or a fade on the play. Watch this. The quarterback has to read. The receiver has to read. 
quarterback thinks he's going inside, throws the slant. Avod goes with the fade. Timeout is called by the Spartan defense. So we'll take a break. 14-7, Michigan Legion. Well, our aerial views today from East Lansing being provided by the Outback Steakhouse Airship. The Bloomin' Onion won. Captain Tom Whitten is at the controls up there of the Bloomin' Onion high above Spartan Stadium. And uh, what a great day. He's got to hover above this beautiful setting now. It is third down and five for Henny. Let's see if they find Tyler Ecker, their tight end. Go to one of their wideouts. Fires, touchdown, easy. They use the fullback. Michigan has always had the fullback as a receiver. Brian Thompson slipped out that time, and the senior scores the third touchdown of the first half for the Wolverines. Well, they really double team the tight ends right here, and then Brian Thompson slides out to the outside. Look at two guys inside on that tight end, three guys inside. No one goes. That's a missed assignment on the Michigan State defense, and that cost them a four-point play by Watson. Should have been three. Ended up being six and probably seven. Revis tacks up the extra point. So remember the penalty on the field goal that gained four points for the Wolverines that time. I'm out. Hey. Here's the progressive drive summary, and Michigan now tacks an 87-yarder to an earlier 98-yarder. So they are moving the ball at will against this Spartan defense. And uh, one of the wags up at the press box said, Henny is treating the MSU defense like they're a team from the MAC. <laughs> of course, that's the only uh, conference that the Wolverines have beaten in the last six games. Damon Williams returns that one just to the other side of the 20 in college football on ABC is brought to you by Chevy the new Chevrolet's and American Revolution IBM become an on-demand business IBM can help and Miller there is good enough and there's better than it has to be Miller good call what a good day for a college football game Spartans, their men's and women's basketball teams will be honored here at halftime, both making the Final Fours last year. And uh, they were so hopeful that their football team would continue driving toward a BCS Bowl, but not going to be easy. Javon Ringer, the freshman, is the running back for the Spartans. He's got the dash. He was a big time recruit. 15 yards as Matt Trennan comes back to help out blocking. Well, speaking of good running backs, the last two times these teams played in East Lansing, a running back rushed for 200 yards. Can you name them? One from State and one from Michigan. And folks. we were here for both of them. Yeah, we were. I'll give you another hint. Both players are in the NFL. No more, no more hints. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they might not need a lot of them. <laughs> I think Drew Stanton feels he can move the football, too. Here's the toss play. And Jeremy Scott, who's getting a lot of looks in that backfield. Now, that's something Baldwin didn't tell us that he was going to do in this game, but uh, they're using Scott as Alan Branch comes up to make the pop. That's Kerry Reed, uh, the wide receiver, coming to the uh, near sideline here on the Michigan, Michigan State side. Are the crowd quiet again? They were quiet when it was 14-0, then it was 14-7. They got back in it. Now it's 21-7, and they've quieted down again. Uh, Spartan fans have suffered a lot through the years at the hands of their state rival. Uh, the Wolverines have dominated them. Pounding for a first down. Coming with the power back, Kulkrick again. So that's the second time the big fella's really turned 245 pounds loose. And we check in again with John. Brent West, Virginia is giving Virginia Tech fits. Pat White here, 46 yards to Darrell Jallo. There's a missed tackle, a missed attempt for the interception. So he goes in easily for the touchdown. 17-14, Virginia Tech's lead is just three, Brent. John, maybe it will be the Mountaineers representing the, uh, the Big East. Snap, fumble snap. Stanton's got it back in his hands, and down he goes. Could have been a turnover. Dave Harris wrapping him up there, but uh, a little volleyball being played in the uh, backfield by the Spartans. 
You know, as you see, this snap is a little hard and just a little well, hit him right in the face. Should have had it. That's just a drop ball. You know what I'm impressed with, Brent, is the quickness of Michigan's defense to substitute. They are bringing on spare defensive linemen, linebackers, and defensive backs almost the instant that whistle blows. Uh, you can see the experience that Michigan has with this spread. They're much more used to playing against it. Jason Teague, the senior, the running back. And they're trying to get the uh, the basketball player going. Matt Trannon hangs on that time, and Pierre Woods, the senior, and a little bit of pushing and shoving. That was a bad Which, uh, throw by Drew Stanton that time. A wide receiver screen. That ball needs to be thrown to the downfield shoulder. What happened was it was thrown to his back, to the deep shoulder, and made Trannon squat and lose all his momentum on the play. It is clear that the Wolverines do not think Trannon is a tough receiver. Watch this ball get thrown back. He stops. He loses all the momentum. He, he fumbles it a little bit, doesn't catch it cleanly, and then is brought down. This is third down and long. Trannon, of course, played for Tom Izzo's basketball team, was a strong rebounder for them. First down, Michigan State. And there is Trennan, what he does best with that great size of his. He's 6'6". Football is his game, folks, when you think about possible professional career. That's 14 yards working the near sideline. Brent, did you see the corner blitz right there? Trannon just finds to find a weak spot. You see the linebacker out there. The ball is thrown out. Now, I'm telling you, Brent, I think Drew Stanton threw that ball blind to the backside. He looked front, front, front turned and threw it just assuming that he was wide open and what a play with a confident quarterback many great athletes out of the Flint area roll the pocket to the right in trouble and throw a strike ground fumbles ball out of bounds though and they wave it off you can didn't see the official the they call it incomplete didn't catch it with his hands came back to it but he caught it with his chest and that's why he missed it well the Big Ten today and uh, we've got uh, four other teams as I remember the uh, the schedule and look at Wisconsin uh, unbeaten Indiana Indiana moving up in class Iowa shutting out Illinois and of course later Minnesota Penn State here and then on ESPN at 745 Notre Dame at Purdue so there's your Big Ten schedule and here the Michigan Wolverines with three touchdowns in four possessions with the lead second down at 10. Fake by Stanton had plenty of time to strike incomplete as the safety beautifully came in. That was Willis Berenger uh, rotating in to make the play. And uh, the safeties, uh, there have been questions about how talented they are. Berenger, he's had an interception in this game, and now he makes another strong play. Terry Love was the intended target that time, number 18, and that was what you call the four vertical, four wide receivers, two outside the numbers, two right down the hash and you just throw it at the back of the defender and Ber and that time Berger came in and made the play on the football Engelman of course the other safety and that's a penalty too many men in the huddle so that'll cost the uh, the Spartans trailing it by 14 points and uh, making uh, too many mistakes and the linesman is up there saying that they did it properly dead ball Illegal substitution on the offense. The player came in. We had 12 players when they broke the huddle, even though number 20 was leaving. Five yards, still. Boy, John down. L. Smith was really upset with that call. Well, John L. Smith has got to be upset with how this is unfolding here in the first half. This is not what he had in mind. This is a pressure cooker of a game for both John L. and Lloyd Carr. In fact, in some ways, there's more pressure on these two coaches than there is on the players themselves. Uh, John L. has to uh, step up and uh, prove that he can handle Michigan in the favorite role. Here is Stanton. Fires. Got him. There's Scott. To the 12-yard line. Scott gives Stanton and the Spartans a first down. Again, Drew Stanton, and give that offensive line credit on this one. No pass rush from that Michigan play. Third and long, the Michigan defensive line, no pressure at all. Watch Stanton. Looks out to the right, looks to the right, turns back to the left. Then he delivers the ball perfectly to the outside to Scott and wide open on the play to pick up the third down. Mason got turned around a little bit, and that's a 31-yard gain for the Spartans. 
back with the inside handoff and hoping to punish them with Kulkrek. So Baldwin getting back more often now to his big back. He sits upstairs next to Doug Nussmeyer, the quarterback coach, and after every series they talk about what is working, and clearly what they hoped would happen with the bigger back is starting to unfold. Now they're down, threatening again. They have the ball on the Wolverine six-yard line. And remember, so far in this football game, there's only been one designed to run for Drew Stanton in the game. That was the touchdown play. Stanton, a threat always to run down here by the end zone. But short of the first down. And Kulkert bobbled the ball. 45 came. Harris came up with the football, but I think the referee says it's down. I think Jim Lepsky walked up, pointed that it was down. And of course, this is going to cause Jim Augustine next to us to take another look at the replay up here quickly. This is what he will see. Colquitt gets the ball. The ball did hit the ground. His elbow hit the ground, and no that's question. why it popped out. No question. Good call down on the field. No need to even buzz anybody on this. Third down now. You can see they can get a first down without scoring with the yellow line on your screen. Play fake. Stanton. He's got Woodley. He's the one who knocked him out of the game. Woodley's picked up with a block, and here comes Stanton. Cut off again. Can he get the first down? He dove for the first down. It'll depend on the spot. It looked like he had it with that dive. Looked like there was holding early in the play. There was a flag down, and you wonder if Michigan wasn't called or some kind of pick in the secondary, but something very early was called in that play. I believe I saw Kulkrick peel back and throw a terrific block on that play. The flag was thrown in the end zone. Only number 13. Yeah, it was automatic a first yeah. down. I thought it was one of the receivers trying to get out on the play. It should be an automatic. But you're right. As the quarterback, Drew Stanton, reversed his field, all those defensive linemen become very, very Watch. vulnerable to those blocks. I think it was. I think it was Kulkrick, but let's keep an eye. Here's Stand the roll. out, Lamar Woodley on Woodley's the play. Woodley's on him. Now watch Kulkrick, I believe. Boy, I don't know who got him. I, I, I don't know who got him. But in that, in that play, you could see the blow low to the knee, and that's what happens when the receiver, the running back, or the quarterback reverses his field. Yeah, good point. So it's going to be first down and goal from the one. We'll take a break now. Bigs were shaken up. Left side, number 56, high on your screen. Watch Kulkrick, number 30, come back on the peel back, and he will take care of the linebacker. And on that play, there was a holding penalty. Stefan Wheeler, number 72, has really got it. The holding penalty's right there. Clearly, Grant Mason held it. It would have been a touchdown originally on the play, one on one coverage. The blocks are on like that. Let's see if Baldwin and the coaches reward Kulkrick on first and goal with an offer to try to score a touchdown. They would put him back within seven. Here he comes. Kulkrick, touchdown. He's got it. A very well deserved touchdown run by 245 pound J.U. Kulkrick. And now the Spartans are an extra point away from making it seven again. Kind of reminds me of a back that might be part of our Aflac answer. Kulkwood right there, the big size guy. Good blocking. You got to give it to that Michigan State offensive line. And how about Drew Stan? There's no backup in that guy. He just keeps firing away. And I, the big one was that third and long pass to Scott that he hit. John Goss to attempt the extra point. Kulkrick with 47 yards rushing here in the first half. Hurt for Michigan has 68. Well, Gary mentioned it. Our Aflac question. The last two times they played in East Lansing, a running back rush for 200 yards. Can you name them? And I'm sure many of you had it. T.J. Duckett and Chris Perry. Duckett and the Spartans for their last win. This the infamous clock game here. Duckett rushing for 211 yards. Chris Perry. What do you have, 51 carries? 51 carries in that football game. And uh, let's check in with uh, Jack. Well, Brent, J.U. is certainly an unusual name, and it's an African for problem child, a nickname his mother gave him in the womb because J.U. kicked so much. But this is a kid that came from really difficult times. He and his sister were from war-torn Liberia after his father was murdered by rebels. His mom had already moved over here to the U.S. 
went back to rescue J.U. and his sister Marita, and now they call the United States home, and he calls Michigan State his place where he runs the football. Yeah, indeed, Jack. It's a, it's a very, uh, very nice story, and it's good to see him come through. The coaches were hopeful. John Goss has the ball on the tee here, Gary, to uh, to kick it off, and uh, we've got uh, 5.53 left in the half. And I don't think this is any surprise for Michigan and Michigan State. They knew this was going to be a high-scoring game. Neither offense can let up. Uh, here's another kickoff. Amber Dinzo come out the tunnel, and uh, Jack, you've got an old friend with you, Coach uh, Coach Izzo. Yeah, and if it went a little deeper in the end zone, Tom Izzo, the head coach for the uh, Spartans basketball squad, was going to catch it. Tom, I want to talk a little bit about the importance of playing basketball for Matt Trannon, because John L. Smith said that was the difference maker in this kid's performance. Well, I love John L. for saying that, but I love Matt Trannon. He was a great basketball player coming out of high school, and. And I think what it helped him with is, you know, catching the basketball. He was fumbling the football a little bit. We tried to help him, and he tried to help us. I want to talk to you about your prospects right after this play. Great. All right, Jack, we'll get done. A lot of folks are thinking the Spartans can make a run on the Final Four. Kevin Grady is the Wolverine running back out of the I formation. Nothing much doing. We go back to Jack and Coach Izzo. I don't know. Now, Brett Musburger's put the pressure on you, Tommy. He says that you guys can go all the way to the Final Four and maybe win it. Thanks, Brent. <laughs> but uh, you know what? We do have a good basketball team. It's a different team, Brent, than the one you covered last year because we don't have the depth that we had last year, but we have three very, very good players in Ager Brown and Paul Davis and Drew Neitzel's coming. We need some of those young guys to step up. We're looking forward to it, Coach. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Jack. Terrific guy, like a lot of the basketball coaches around the Big Ten. Mike Hart and coaches around the country. That season will be going soon. Henny with an empty backfield slings it to the freshman wide out that time, or was that Massacoy? Timmy Massacoy, the senior tight end, making his first catch. Yeah, and you're going to have to throw that ball right into the stomach. Massacoy, a leader, worked so hard to get that playing time. And again, it looks like every time that you try to run that ball between the tackles against Michigan State, they feel good about it. When you try to throw that ball against their corners, they get very uncomfortable. Let's see if Michigan doesn't attack those corners. Third and three. Penny. to see him drop a ball like that right in the old mitts. Yeah, he, he turned inside and had, again, Penny had the back wide open, Avon wide open, and threw it slightly behind, but Avon eats those up. And you know, Brandon, a week ago, he said he lost the game when he made an early drop against Wisconsin. I don't think that was the case, but that's the type of leader he is. Ryan. Brown awaits the punt. Going to let this one roll dead, and he's been instructed by the uh, special teams coach at Michigan State, Jim McElwain, to stay far away when a punt starts bound, bouncing like that. Look at this, a huh? little uh, <laughs> give the <to> business. <laughs> you like a quarterback, tough kid. Tough out. 21-14 with 4.19 to go, and Drew Stanton now with a chance to tie this ball game before the intermission. And they go to the freshman. And so that was Springer, our Pacific Life game summary. Chad Hitty, 12 of 17, 165 yards, three touchdowns. But Drew Stanton and the Spartans dig back in. Culquick with 47 yards and a touchdown. And the defense of the Spartans hoping to close in, but this could be the biggest play of the half. Three points on the board, roughing the kicker, gives Michigan a first down, and they move in for their third touchdown in four possessions. They lead it by seven. The throwback, a play they practiced all day long. They put it in the hands of the speed. Michigan will need the angle to stop him. Touchdown! Kerry Reed, the 6'2 junior, 61 yards. A play they worked on over and over in practice with Stanton looking one way and then turning completely around to throw it. Down twice 
by 14. Drew Stamp. So many ways to attack in this spread offense. Thought now it's the wide receiver scheme caught Michigan completely flat-footed. John Goss ties it. Deadlocked at 21. You can see it. That's the touchdown player right there to the outside read. Now watch what happens when this ball's thrown compared to the one that went to Tranet. Right to the inside. See how he can go upfield with it? He's pointing the direction he wants to go. He goes for it. He's got a convoy right down there. That's how you design a wide receiver screen, and he catches it on the run. That's what made the play such a dynamic play. Caught Michigan in a field blitz, and there was no stop at Kerry Reed. He catches it, takes it, and ties the football game. One play, two play, comes back, bows, perfect throw. The bank ski right there. Gordon Nabelski, number 71, gets a clean block, but I don't even know if he had to have that one. That was a touchdown all the way. And Scott stays with it, blocking downfield. There were so many key blocks. And Morris, the center, able to get over on that screen, but the action by the quarterback had the Wolverine defense moving hard to the right. This kickoff will be fielded on the three-yard line by Mason. Short of the 30-yard line. So here is your star quarterback comparison in this game. And Henny with three huh. touchdowns. Drew Stanton with one. But Stanton's thrown for 209 yards. And Henny for one six. What a duel we're going to have between these two. Absolutely. And we knew it. And you know what's interesting? Both offenses are moving the football. Closing in on 600 yards in the first half of this football game. And I, again, I'm going to come back that I think Michigan let off the gas pedal a little bit, not throwing the football. The weakness of the Michigan State defense is the secondary. Michigan has to use every opportunity to throw the ball against them. Michigan, of course, is without Steve Preston, if you joined us late. Back home with his shoulder injury. Fires. Got eight yards on that first down to pass. Carl Tabb, the 6'2 senior. So we've reached the bottom of the hour. I'm Brett Musburger with Gary Danielson and Jack Aroot. Gorgeous day in East Lansing. Big Ten showdown. Michigan State, unbeaten and ranked. Michigan with two losses already. In fact, if you go back to last year, the Wolverines have lost four of their last six games. There are only two victories over the Mid-American Conference. So it has been uh, a difficult, difficult stretch for Lloyd Carr and the Wolverines. Here is a first down. Mike Hart returning to the lineup uh, in this game, and he has run very, very well. At the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Don't you think it maybe George Perlis and Bo Schembeck are wondering, whatever happened to my Michigan-Michigan State game? <laughs> This thing is turned into something they've never seen around here. Both teams spread offenses, throwing it all over the field. This is different type of Big Ten football than it was even five years ago. Henny steps up in the pocket and fires complete to the near side. So easy. Short of the 40-yard uh, line, and there's Avant, number eight, who scored a touchdown, dropped his last pass that was thrown to him but not that time working on the sideline with 218 clock stopped as he's out of bounds and uh, the Wolverines trying to regain the lead they struck first on their opening possession of the game sort of interesting Michigan State won the toss and they did not defer uh, we don't see that very often they took the football and uh, so the Wolverines will have it when we start the second half first down and ten They bunch the Wolverine receivers to the left. Kenny, though, looks back underneath and short to Mike Hart, the running back. Ashton walks to the corner with the stop. So John and the gang will be along here with uh, Craig James and Aaron Taylor. They have highlights and analysis. They'll get us up to date on that uh, West Virginia, Virginia Tech game. Yeah, that, that, uh, that looks like a good football game. That's three straight times in this drive. Michigan has started off first down on a pass. They feel comfortable throwing the ball. They should. It's there. Second down and four. 
the offensive line that's a first down they'll spot that ball for a first down as he comes back to the tight end Massacoy number 88 and they'll give him the spot but uh, we must uh, give credit Gary to that offensive line of uh, of Lloyd Carr Stenovich Hennigay Krause Lentz Wiley doing a good job here first down and 10 you could see very comfortable in the pocket Avon on that quick pitch and on those soft corners they're just attacking underneath relentlessly well that, that's what they're going to force they're going to and, and it's what I would do if I was calling plays against Michigan State they're going to force Michigan State to move up and take away the quick pass again you really can't rush Chad Henney if he's going to take three step drops and just throw it out to the outside then the quarterbacks move up the corners move up and the deep game will be there this is pretty simple if you're Michigan the required mouthpiece back in place for the Michigan quarterback come back you cannot give up the run but that time number 41 David Heron Jr. their junior linebacker making still another stop he has been uh, a very solid linebacker and a timeout is going to be called by the Wolverines with 117 to go and we check in with the Jack on the field. Well Brent let's go back to that little chippiness by the quarterback for the Wolverines just a few plays ago when he decided he was going to lock horns. One of the reasons why Chad Henney doesn't put up with anything is the fact that he started his career as a linebacker and a running back not as a quarterback in fact it wasn't until the eighth grade the way he became quarterback was the high school football coach went to the eighth graders because the high school didn't have a quarterback said who can throw the ball and he was mum one of his teammates turned him in said he can throw it a mile next thing you know Chad Henney was hauling the ball and he's been so ever since and uh, he's a, he's a good one there's his numbers on the day both quarterbacks now have thrown for the exact same amount 209 yards of pass offense in this game for both quarterbacks in the first half and Chad Henney was so big so young Brent that I know of one Big Ten coach that offered him a scholarship after his sophomore year in high school. Well you can see him checking the wrist band there plays are all numbered as he brings the offense out with 121 to go before the intermission. The Wolverines have one timeout remaining according to the scoreboard and the Spartans with two. We are tied at 21. It is third down and a seven. A four man rush fires short of the first down. This will be fourth and short and the uh, Spartans are indicated it's waved up but the umpire is right there. Avant the intended receiver and Heron again. The defender Lloyd checking that clock at 106 wants to see where it's uh, spotted whether he's going to go for the field goal. Now if you're going to take the field goal I'd let the clock run down. If you're going to go for it I'd call a timeout. So you don't want to kick a field goal. This will be the last timeout if, if I'm right about that I checked George Hill and uh, that's confirmed. So here you see it. 52 seconds left in the half and we'll take a break. So the Wolverines started out red hot in this game 98 yards for a touchdown and they have also had 52 and 87 yards for a touchdown so they have gone the long way. Gary. Yeah twice 10 play drive and 11 play drive that really keeps Drew Stanton off the football field one of the goals in this game but it's still 21 21 and uh, really really close at 600 yards now of offense again. You wondered, are they going to go for it? Because you did use the timeout on fourth down. Well, instead of taking the timeout, what Michigan should have done is ask for a measurement, which you can in that situation, a regroup. Now they need the first down on fourth and one. And Hart's got it, and the clock will stop, and he's still going. So it took two big old Spartans to finally wrestle number 20. To the turf here in East Lansing. That was a great, that was the good strategy. Lloyd used it exactly the way I thought. If you're going to take the timeout, you have to go for it. Now the clock stops. You have an opportunity to put seven points up. Remember now they're without a timeout. They bring the clock down. And of course, if the Spartans don't toughen up against Mike Hart, they're going to give up seven instead of three. And there again is uh, David Heron. Now they'll go up and ground the ball. Looks like they'll just go up and do a clock play here, giving them one more shot at the end zone. 19 seconds to go. 
Now, last week, a little bit of controversy, and Lloyd was criticized with nine seconds to go. Michigan had an opportunity to go for the end zone on third down. They had an illegal procedure penalty. Three seconds went off the clock. They sent the field goal team out, and then they put the time back on. They kicked the field goal, ended up being a big play. This time, they're going to go for it. All I know is you don't want to miss the second half of this play. Antonio Bass, number 18, one of the wideouts. Can't get sacked here if you're Chad Henney. At time, fires out of bounds, stopping the clock. Good With defense 13 by seconds State. to go, Carl Tab, the 17, the uh, the receiver. Now remember, they're without timeouts, so they've got to work against the fact that they've got only 13 seconds to go here in this situation. Well, they got to kick they've the, field, kick goal the field goal. Yeah. Fourth down, you got to get points. That was a very important hit on that far side to get Tab out of bounds and uh, force them into a field goal situation here. Well, it would have been nice for Michigan State to tackle him inbounds on the play, but good defense to force the throw short of the first down. And here's Revis. 20 yards. <laughs> Got it. So it is 24-21. The Wolverines, once they let it by as many as 14, We'll be back after this message and word from our ABC station. Final nine seconds here, 24-21, Michigan leading. Um, masterful use of the clock that time by the Michigan offense. They got it down there. They made sure they got their three points. The only problem that could have been is they would have got tackled inbounds. I thought that ball would have been thrown into the end zone, but Chad Henney now must show that he can finish this football game. Ironically, both teams, the word is finish. Michigan State from a year ago had that finish in their whole offseason program, and now Chad Henney needs to finish this football game as hot as he's been. Devon Williams back to return. Into this breeze, they'll kick it on the ground to try and eat up these seconds. All the way to DeMond. Dances out. And he is down at about the 34-yard line with three ticks of the clock left. So one snap here for the uh, for the Spartans. In the corner will return that coming over to the near sideline. 24-21 sellout crowd here. The crowd seems to be just taking a deep breath. Yeah, just absolutely. kind of <laughs> relaxing, going to get them a little brout. Uh, going to get ready for the uh, second half here. And it, it figures again to be uh, a dandy, just like last year down in Ann Arbor. Now, John L. is a little different. He never lets up off the gas pedal. Do they throw one more deep pass here, or do they take a knee? Jason Teague is the running back, and uh, now Stanton going to use one of the They lined uh, up in a bunch. Timeouts. They lined up in a bunch shotgun on that play. Well, you know, uh, John L. John L. Smith uh, talked about uh, talked to Gary about just how big this game is for his team. I know this, Gary. This could be a giant step for our kids and for our program and for we want to take where we want to take this program. And so we need to take that step forward to get to the upper echelon of the Big Ten where we need to be. Down by three right now. Last snap of the half coming up here for Drew Stanton and uh, the Spartans. And look at this Michigan lineup. Michigan State, excuse me, lined up in the shotgun formation. Three receivers to the bottom of the screen. They're going to let it fly. Are they going to let it fly one more time? And uh, Michigan drops everybody back. Stanton arches it deep. And it is intercepted by Berenger and he fumbles, but recovered by the Wolverines. And that'll bring the first half to an end. 45 points scored here by the Spartans and the Wolverines. A little chuckle as they go off. Michigan leads it by three. Eight, Sunday at 11.30 on 7. You're watching college football on ABC Sports, home of the full championship series. It took three overtimes to settle it last year. Here at the intermission, three points. Michigan leads 24-21.
Chad Hitty has had a hot hand in the first half. 19 to 24, 219 yards and three touchdowns as the Wolverines strike first. Now, Gary, we got something that's really out of whack. <laughs> well, coming into this football game, Michigan State's defense, and I admit the competition wasn't there, was controlling the game. Only two drives of plus 80 yards, and the Michigan offense has kept Drew Stanton off the field. That was part of their game plan. They drove it twice for touchdowns. That was a big part of this football game. Your feeling is, though, that the Spartans are very vulnerable on the corners, and I haven't heard you say anything about the vulnerability of the Wolverine defense. They seem kind of sound. I, I think they do. I, I think Michigan State has got their big plays on part of the offense and, and the, the brilliant passing of Stanton. It's been easy pickings for Chad Henney in this football game. It's real tempting to call a pass on every play because Michigan State secondary does not match up. Remember, we go back to the start of the game. The Spartans won the toss and took the ball. And it goes through Mason's hands out of the end zone, and it'll come out on the 20 yard line. So the Wolverines will have the first possession here in the second half, and we check in with Jack. In that mismatch, the, the secondary, the corners for Michigan State Spartans is what concerns John L. Smith. On the way out, he said, look, this is the problem. He said, it's not that they're being outplayed. He says, they're being outthought. He criticized them at the halftime by making major mental errors, Gary. He looked a little shell-shocked. But then again, so did Lloyd Carr when I talked to him as well. This has been a battle. Sure has. Demond Williams. The J.C. transfer and Ashton Watson will open on the corners. Jaron Hayes tried it once and got turned completely around by the freshman Mario Manningham. So here is first and ten. Four down. The backers are off a few yards. And he is sacked. So his receiver was covered. He thought better of it. And Domata Pecco, he with the uh, great hairdo. From and let, Samoa, 320 pounds. And let's go back to that story we started out with this football game. Chad Henney has had a brilliant first half of this season, but in the second half, he struggled. First pass of the game in the second half, he takes a stack. He must be better than 40% to beat this Michigan State offense, not the defense. Hart will return to action, and this will put the Wolverines in the third and long. Our Pacific Life game summary stats. Look at the offense that we have in this game, folks. I mean, that's wow. Talk about yardage average yards. Right. Seven, four, eight, one. This is becoming, with the two offenses, somewhat like a tennis match. You must hold serve because if the other guy gets the ball, you anticipate he's going to put points on the board. Four down lineman, nickel look against the wideouts. Henny up in the pocket, intercepted, picked off. Penalty flag thrown as the ball was intercepted by Sir Darian Adams, the bandit. Looked like an illegal formation or illegal procedure by Michigan on the play also. So Michigan starts out not holding serve, but worse, double faulting. Illegal shift on the offense. That penalty is declined. First down. Right in the middle of the field, this is going to happen. They're going to get a crossing route right through the middle of the field, and that's where the interception happens. Play action pass. Linebacker drops right there. The crossing route is coming, and Sedarian Adams drops right into the spot. Chad Henney tried to force one in, and the story develops the first time this season Michigan State has started inside the 20-yard line. Jason Teague is the running back for Drew Stanton. Gets the handoff. Teague on a cutback. And on the interception, we go back to the bandit. And Adams is from Bradenton, Florida. And it's a hybrid position. It really is a safety that they move up. And he can play both ways. He can defend the run or the pass. And for a time, the Spartans were going to put their outstanding safety, Eric Smith, at the bandit position. But Adams came along so quickly that they were able to use 27. And here he comes up with a huge turnover. Second down. 
cut back by Teague and keeps battling toward the first down marker, but there is a penalty flag. Yeah, holding on Lamar Woodley. That was a pretty easy one. Lamar Woodley was not able to be blocked and held on the play. All that bouncing around. Ten yards penalty. Repeat, repeat. Second down. Mike Getve, number that time, number 66, is the guy that had it. And uh, sometimes it's hard to block a great guy. And when the back moves around and jitterbugs around, goes inside, goes outside, you see it grab at the jersey. That was an easy one and a very undisciplined penalty by Michigan State. Ringer, the freshman, is the running back on second and 16. He motions out. Stanton takes off. And he is colored. So this will uh, the 17 yard line and Chris Graham, the inside linebacker for the Wolverines, bring it down, number five. Now you start to think if Michigan State might give Michigan a little taste of their medicine here and go to Trannon on the mismatch of the fade. Trannon's in the football game, but they just lob one up for him to go up and get it like a rebound. Morgan Trent is in at the left corner. Trannon, the basketball player, down though at the bottom of your screen against Mason. They look in that direction, come back, fire the screen, and went for a touchdown, and close to a first down inside the 10-yard line. So John L. and the staff must make the decision this time. Behringer makes the, uh, the stop on Ringer. Did it very quickly, did not even hesitate sending this field goal team out there at least to line up in a field goal situation. That's a great stop by the Michigan defense. The penalty was the key play. John Goss, McElwain, the special teams coach. This a 26-yard attempt. The punter, Brandon Fields, on to hold it. Chris Morris is the snapper for the tie. it down deadlocked at 24 East Lansing the battle continues between the Spartans and the Wolverines welcome back to the land of Sparty and his Spartans have tied it up here at 24 with a field goal a tremendous quarterback duel between Henny and Stanton Henny with three first half touchdowns and a second half interception is Gary continues our storyline of Henny having excellent first halves and struggling in the second. This will come out on the 20 yard line and get a reminder over on ESPN. They'll have all the scores and highlights for you. Then at 7.45 Eastern, it'll be the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the Boilermakers of Purdue in what should be a dandy. Tonight is a big Saturday of college football continues. Just to give you an example of what happens when the quarterback struggles in the second half, against Wisconsin last week, Michigan's offense put 268 yards up in the first half. Only 133 in the second half, just five first downs. Using the fullback with Hart. And they run Mike right straight ahead. And he is a tough, you know, he's tough to find, leave alone bring down. Even when you watch on the monitor, as he squirts in behind his big offensive lineman, but he'll come out the other end on you. And, uh, the Michigan Wolverines, here's the drive chart, Gary. Yeah, I didn't, you can see it. The big drive to start off the game after that punt down to the two-yard line really set the tone, made this game a real wide-open football game. Second down and long. And this is going to leave them with about four yards that they're going to need with Caleb Thornhill from the uh, very well-known Thornhill family. What was his dad nickname? Mad Dog? Something like that. He was His papa was a, he was a hard hitter. And this is the, uh, the third of the two boys followed Pops. So the Thornhills have been prominent for the uh, Spartans. Michigan likes to run those little squeeze plays. Receivers squeeze off of each other. One of them stops and turns around right by the 30-yard line. Leading three. And he flips it out to his freshman. He cannot get it. 
So Mario Manningham, who scored a touchdown in the first half, is stopped by Otis Wiley, another freshman, and the nickelback. Number 21 makes a big defensive play. He's a corner of the future here in East Lansing. Manningham showed his inexperience on this play. This is third and short. Take it right up the field, right up the field. He gives ground to the outside, and that's why he didn't pick up the first down. That should have been like a running play up there and dive across the line. Ross Ryan back to punt. The Wolverines. They had three protectors back that time, and uh, Kyle Brown apparently did not signal for the fair catch. He's simply muscled. Now, does Drew Stanton's offense reflect his personality? We'll find out when we come back. I've always kind of been raised to be a leader in everything that I do and kind of being aggressive, and that's what this offense is about. It's about taking your chances and knowing where to take your chances, but taking what they're giving you. He was down 14-0 in the first quarter, 21-7 early in the second quarter, and now he has driven the Spartans into a 24-all tie on first 10, moving pocket left, got a receiver, and accurately hits him again. Out of bounds, putting the ball in Terry Love's hands, Hall the defensive back. Can it be any prettier than that? You half roll out, you pull your quarterback up. Michigan has no chance really to put any pressure on the quarterback and on the uh, Stanton on that type of play, and he puts the ball accurately. You know, you talk to the coaches here, they say he kind of throws an ugly ball. Boy, it isn't ugly to me. He puts it on the face mask, you know, seven, eight out of ten times. First down and ten. Come back with Cole Crick, the big back. In the uh, first half, he rushed for 47 yards. Gabe Watson down that defensive line makes the stop. You know, you go back to a year ago, and you see number 56, Woodley, and your mind flashes to the end of Stanton's afternoon in Ann Arbor. And uh, I had a chance to ask Drew if he thought Woodley gave him the business, drove him into the turf, and he said, no, no, no. There was nothing dirty about that play. My shoulder hit awkwardly, and uh, he underwent surgery up there. And today he has stayed away from number 56. Slips inside, backside fumble. Got hit from the backside, and the Wolverines were on it. They've got it on the turnover. So that time, Mr. Harris was in there, and he should have just swallowed the football because there was tremendous backside pressure on him that time. Ran the sprint out that time right into the teeth of the blitz. Had too many guys on the half roll watch. He rolls into it. Michigan and, and, and comes with the blitz to that side. Burgess from behind him, number six, gets a piece of it. And then the ball's popped loose, lands on the floor, and Harris gets the recovery. I think it was Pierre Woods that knocked it out that time. It was Pierre Woods. He came from the backside. First down and 10. There's that quick throw against the soft corner, Avant. See, that, that's what I like. That's what I like Michigan to do now. Set up the second half the way they set up the start of the football game. Serve notice to Michigan State again. We don't believe your corners can cover us. We're going to take the easy throw if you give it to us. You must adjust to us. It's like checkers. The ball is at the Spartans 41 yard line. Devon Williams is number nine. He's only 5'9. Ashton Watson, 5'11. Going deep, Devon. Incomplete. So Chad Henney went for the score on that pass with 8.07 to go. And a reminder that tomorrow, the Chrysler Classic of Greensboro at 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific time here on ABC. PGA Tour event. Big play here now for Michigan. Third and medium. Last two times on third down. Out of the game. Let's see what they do here. Three receivers to the right. They're going to throw. To the running back, Hardy won't get it. 
He was dogged from behind by Brandon McKinney, the 320-pound senior, and the coaches will show him that tape and say, look, that's why we wanted you to shed 15 pounds. You're much quicker. <laughs> and you know, he read it so well, You can he, whether he lost the weight or not, he recognized the screen pass. He saw Hart move inside. When you see a back move inside, you always become questioned whether he's going to run the screen. Folks, that's the third three and out for the Wolverines this half as the Spartan defensive staff makes the correct adjustments. Punt is hung high for Brown. He's going to let this one go. It's going to be down, tapped, down inside the five-yard line. Tremendous coverage by the Wolverines that time. And that play was by Brandon Harrison, number 27. Didn't panic, put his foot right there, and then just tipped it back in. Let's go quickly to John in New York. Well, Brent Vince Young is having quite a day against Missouri. Just tosses this one over to the right. Lamont's Taylor takes it, hangs on, gets it over the pylon and in before he went out of bounds. Texas now leading Missouri 31 to 13. Brent. Well, the Hornets broke that one open, didn't they, John? And now here for the Spartans, they're backed up inside the five. Ringer, the freshman, is the deep set running back. Picks his way out to the five. Prescott Burgess and Brandon Engelman, number 31, very prominent defensively there. We come down to the bottom of the hour, 2.30 Eastern here in uh, East Lansing, Michigan. Gary and Jack, I'm Brent here. Nice to have you with us, this Big Ten Donnybrook. Between unbeaten Michigan State and twice beaten Michigan and the underdog. Very unusual, isn't it? I think you have to go back to the 70s, somebody said. Second down and eight, here comes the blitz. They run against it. Freshman looked like he had the corner, but quickly Burgess and friends closed in on the near side. Jimmy Herman, the uh, the safety. Gary. Jimmy Herman's guessing right a little bit here now, Brent. You know, with his calls again, that was the next second blitz in a row, right into the teeth of the call for Michigan State. As a defensive coordinator, that's what you want to do. That's why you do all that film study. You're calling those plays not by chance. You're doing it educated guesses, and right now he's guessing right. Most of those yards came in the first half. We had the offenses have bogged down here a little bit. Michigan State was able to move down and tie it with a field goal. This is third and five. Stanton stands tall. Fires first down. Out to the 27-yard line. Terry Love again. He is impressive. Just a sophomore. Watch him come across the middle of the field here. Just a square in route and snap that ball out of midair right as Engelman is on him on the play. Watch him snap it. Goes up, catches the ball with his thumbs together, snaps it down. That way you don't bobble it. Look at that. That is how you teach it. Square in route. If you're a quarterback, you got to throw it over the linebackers' heads. Receivers go up and catch it. Two hands. Draw play. And Teague crosses the 35-yard line. Engelman, the safety, makes the hit. Well, let's meet uh, our quarterback, Drew Stanton. The sport that I'm best at besides football uh, has to be baseball. The uh, best place to go on a date in East Lansing is probably uh, my favorite place would have to be the fish market. When I was a kid playing football, I always pretended I was Barry Sanders. How do you like a quarterback who didn't look up to another quarterback who was That's a running back? Uh, he was the best guy on the team, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that quick throw on that screen. They put it in Trannon's hands, and the football player is close to midfield. This all has to fit together if you're running these wide receiver screens. The ball has to be thrown upfield towards the way the receiver and the other receivers have to block. Jeremy Scott does a good job right there getting a block on the play. You see downfield, Kyle Brown gets a play. Positive play. If you do it right, it will work. Scott, he's taking a direct snap through an interception in the first half down at the uh, one-yard line. Comes out as one of the four wideouts as the Spartans spread the field again. And the running play is blown up. 
freshman was hit as he got the handoff by Jamison. And Jamison just ate him up. Number 90 was right there, and we check in with Jack. Brent, maybe one of the reasons why Drew Stanton says his second best sport is baseball is because he was so accomplished at baseball in high school. As a pitcher in high school, he hit 561 his junior year at Harrison High in Farmington Hills. And uh, as a shortstop, he had a, and as a pitcher, he had a 94 mile an hour fastball. There was a point in time, Brent, when he thought he had a better future in Major League Baseball than in the NFL. Yeah, but Gary asked me the other day, Jack, if uh, he would take the money from George Steinford and run, and he said, no way, this is too much fun. He sets the screen again, puts it in Ringer's hands, and he crosses midfield. Good looking freshman running back is. Uh, Berenger makes the stop. He's got a little bit of dash. You get number 39 to the open field. Berenger shaking up on the hit. Catches the ball very comfortably, but Berenger did a nice job. That play had some potential to pick up big plays, but Berenger came in very low. That's what you got to do. You get those big offensive linemen in front of you as a defensive back. That's when you really want to submarine the play. Berenger made a nice stop there. This Michigan Here. State offense has so many different styles of a way to attack you. Derringer's on the sideline, third and six. Stanton's going to run for it. Dive for the first down. No sliding for number five. <laughs> number five. He is something to watch. Any folks, college football is brought to you by Hummer. Check out the H2. Hummer, like nothing else. Singular, raising the bar. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, one taste and you get it. And Aflac, ask about it at work. That's the play that really has given Michigan problems with the running quarterback. Not so much the design runs, but the runs off of the pass. And Stanton hurt him there for a first down. Step by the freshman Javon Ringer, and he's tripped up by Dave Harris. And uh, John, what's up with the Hokies of Virginia Tech? Well, they're starting to show why they may be the class of the ACC as they go against another former Big East team, or rather current Big East team in West Virginia. 34 to 17 is the lead after Cedric Humes goes four yards with that run, and they're into the fourth quarter. Brett, that's it. I'm back on the South Florida bandwagon in the Big East. 24 all with 157 to go in the third. A strike for eight yards. And Grant Mason. Michigan the stop on Kyle Brown. Michigan went with a three-man line that time. Dropped eight. I'll tell you, sometimes if you got a hot quarterback the way Stanton is, you can drop 12. And he'll still find a seam to throw the ball in. That was pretty well covered, but Stanton just ripped that throw in there. He is extremely confident. Time permitting, of course, stay tuned for the thrifty post-game report and then the second game of the Saturday doubleheader here on ABC. There's the auction look. And a freshman with the first down run. Beautiful look from Drew Stanton, and they have to be so conscious of his running ability as he waited before he put it in Ringer's hands. And that brings it to Drew Stanton and what he has to do one thing he has to do if he's Michigan State, survive the Big Ten. You got a lot of guys taking shots at him and a lot more on the horizon that are going to try to nick this guy. If he doesn't get hurt, he may just be the Big Ten's most valuable football player. Engelman is still out at that safety position, and Harrison, a freshman, playing for the Wolverines, and another freshman as Berenger checks back in just prior to that play well here's the Pontiac game changing performance to dominate a Pontiac game changing performance log on to ESPN.com keyword Pontiac and Pontiac will contribute five thousand dollars to the winning schools scholarship fund second down for the Spartans stack the three receivers that familiar look and they put it in Tran's hands behind the two blockers. And Tran is punched out of bounds at the 12 yard line as the rangy basketball player brings it down between his two blocking wideouts. 
Well, they only have 20 hours to prepare. Each team does in college football. Michigan State seems to be able to squeeze a lot into 20 hours on offense. And really what it is is experience in the offense year after year after year. It's a cumulative effect. And you can see they have many more plays they draw from than they did even last year. First down from the 12-yard line. Teague cuts back across the five-yard line as the final seconds tick away here in the third quarter. Drew Stanton with four fingers in the air. The money quarter is coming up next. Last year, it took three overtimes to decide this battle. Will we have more of the same? Well, we're about to find out. tale of two halves as far as the offenses and defenses are concerned Gary yeah it sure has been of course we had the interception in there that'll cut chances and Michigan State with that yard just a methodical drive that's going on you know seven and a half minutes right here second and seven for Stanton and the Spartans as we start the final quarter Stanton keeps it and he stopped at the six yard line it'll be third down interesting game in that uh, Michigan started out so well right. and we just go back to what we said about Chad Henney's struggles in the second half uh, I got it down right here I had to look at it myself twice three for five for seven yards in the second half that's what happens you only have nine plays in the second half so far by your offense you can't win and it, it's tough it goes back to the quarterback believe me I've been there I know what it's like off to the freshman and won't get there either and sure this will call. set up a field goal situation for John Goss and uh, you would have expected them yeah. maybe to put a little more pressure on with a run pass option with Stan to the wide side but uh, hindsight's 2020 as usual curious call here stretch play against Michigan's defense they looked at first to be a little bit confused but you see it coming up from the outside they get tackles from the secondary that time and that's really what cleaned up the play Grant Mason made the play. I thought they would come with the option. I would have guessed option play forever. I'd have bet my money on it. 23 yarder for the lead with John Goss doing the kicking. Left hash. Tough angle up short. And you could see he pulled it. He misses it. That is a tough angle. And I am surprised on fourth down that they didn't come in the other direction to improve the angle, even if they didn't get the touchdown. So it's still deadlocked at 24 here in the fourth quarter. In Lansing, the Michigan State Capitol, which was built in 1879 and modeled after our Capitol building in Washington, D.C. If you look down from the blimp here, 24 all, the Battle of Michigan continues. Chad Henney and the Wolverines coming out. Here's Hart behind the fullback to daylight, and Mike breaks free. 50 in a foot race with Smith. Out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Eric Smith, the strong safety, finally runs him down, but that is 66 more yards, and what a difference Hart makes with this offense. They released the tight end right here, and that causes the defensive end to kind of get out of sync. Look at that hole. Big good block inside by Brian Thompson. And I'll tell you, Eric Smith, pretty impressive on this play. Mike Hart is not a burner. And Eric Smith ran him down to save for what right now? A touchdown at least. Officially 64 yards, 158 on the day for Hart. Grady replaces him. He gets the carry and twists free from the first hit and battles his way to the 12-yard line. So the freshman with a powerful run, Nick Smith making that stop. We're going to go back to that Michigan State drive because it could have been very, very important. They held the ball for 16 plays for 90 yards, and they came away with zero, as in goose egg points. And right now, Michigan has taken it right back down their throat. And remember, on the interception starting on the 18-yard line, they got three points, so two opportunities. Total three points. Hart back on the field for the Wolverines. Daylight. And Mike battles for the first down again. You just cannot bring that little rascal down. 
How could anybody have thought that he was going to be too small to play college football after breaking all of those rushing records in the state of New York? He is awesome. Well, he's one of those guys, it, it, kind of like Drew Stanton, the measurements, the measurables just don't count. You know, he doesn't run the fastest 40, not the tallest guy in the world, but boy, he knows how to run and he knows how to deliver a blow when he is running. He makes the defender feel the hit instead of the other way around. Will Paul is his lead blocker if they elect to come back with it, and they do. Following Paul, moving the legs, and it took three of the green jersey fellas to bring him down right now. Eric Smith and Bazemore were two of them, and Pecco was the third one. He was also in on it. So well, this is second to goal, Gary. This is when Terry Malone loves to run that play action pass to those tight ends and fullbacks in the flat. Offensive coordinator at Michigan just loves this second down call. They're running the ball well. Be interested to see what he dials here. Well, Thompson caught a touchdown pass earlier from the fullback position. He's back on the field. They're looking in that direction, and he might have to throw the corner. Penalty flag is down. No catch. You could see the call that time. Ecker, but there is a penalty flag. I think Eric Smith, number 36, got hit him early, but I don't know if he caught the ball or not. Ecker thinks he did. <laughs> and of course, replay will look at the uh, situation upstairs also. Because they enter into this catch or no catch in the end zone, depending yep. on this call. Second down play action. The ruling on the field is there is not a catch. Pass interference, number 42 of the defense. First and goal. The previous spot is the two yard line by rule, half the distance, and an automatic first down. Now take a look and. See if you think catcher, no There's catch. There's Eric Ecker wide open on the play. I think it's Eric Smith. No, it isn't. It comes inside that checker. time. And does he catches it one? Has his feet on the ground. Looks like he may be bobbling it just a bit. Yeah, so Tabachnik was the defender. And in this situation, nothing's indisputable about this, let me tell you. It looks like the right ankle, but only maybe. They still have a first end goal. Good strike position for the Wolverines. Flipping and Hart is down and touchdown is signal. The side judge throws it up and says he broke the plane with the ball. He was stumbling and somehow he managed to slip the ball across the plane. How huge the goal is that? line is a plane, the sidelines a boundary. It's as simple as that. Michigan State dominating the third quarter gets just three points. All of a sudden you pop a run for 64 yards and you score seven to take the lead. 165 yards and a touchdown for Mike Hart. Bevis tacks on the extra point. Now it is Stanton and Michigan State's turn. And the last time they drove it down there and came up empty. And the Spartans again are under the gun as you watch Paul the lead blocker. Now here's where he starts to stumble. Now watch somehow. Keeps the left knee off the ground before he breaks the plan. Wonderful balance by Mike Hart. Take another look at this. He's starting to go down on the cut. Somehow the knee doesn't touch the ground. That's just a sensational effort. And remember that play was designed to go right over the guard, right behind Paul. He saw it and made it to the stretch to the outside. Oh yeah, Jack Hart makes a huge difference with the Wolverines. Yeah, and you'd be surprised. A kid from Syracuse, New York, wanting to always dream about being a Michigan Wolverine. But his mom discovered that fact after Mike Hart declared for Michigan. His mom, Rory, discovered a poem in which he dreamed some specific dreams and wrote, Mike Hart did, when he was seven years old. These are the two dreams that he had, Brent. The first, playing for the University of Michigan. The second, break Barry Sanders' rushing record. And, uh... Lloyd Carr will take the first one. Doesn't care a whole lot about the second one. <laughs> As college football on ABC is brought to you by Cadillac and the SDS. With available performance tuned all wheel drive breakthrough. Taco Bell, think outside the bun. And Pacific Life for insurance, annuities, and investments. Choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. Well, Gary, what do you make of the wide open Big Ten this year, my friend? You know, five out of the 11 football teams in the Big Ten are running the spread offense this year. 
Last year, this conference threw over 4,500 passes through the whole year. I think they may beat that this year. Cole Crick is the running back. Stanton rolls hard to the right, and he'll keep this one. And he'll step out of bounds at the uh, 17th. Did not even get back to the line of scrimmage. Just Pierre Woods made a couple of plays for him defensively. It was right down there on uh, number five. And uh, the Spartans have been uh, bottled up here for the most part in the second half. Yeah, Le Leon Hall did a nice job that time, taking away the primary throw. No one really to go to that time for Drew Stanton. And uh, I'll tell you, I got a feeling that Dave Baldwin, offensive coordinator for Michigan State, is going to second guess himself all week for that third down call down there on the goal line. Second down and 12. Ran to the left side. Gave the field goal kicker in the process a tough angle. Yep. Ringer, the running back. Trannon comes in motion. And they set Ringer. He got nowhere to go, and he takes a whipping. At the 12-yard line, big Mr. Watson unloaded on him. Yeah, but Dave... Dave Harris, the middle linebacker, number 45, has been all over this football field. He's waited till a senior to play, but 45, it's a fake screen to the left side of the screen, and then he comes back to the right side of the screen, and watch 45 come right there. There he is, right there, coming into the play, sets it up, and then cleaned up by Massey. Oh, oh and then Watson. Like I said, head Mr. To head. Watson met up with him. <laughs> yes, indeed. And uh, we've got uh, Lamar Woodley down. He'll have to leave for at least a play. Lamar Woodley shaken up. We'll go to the Wolverine sideline. That type of play, you'll get an offensive tackle kind of throwing at the legs of the defensive end. Thirty-one twenty-four. Five receivers and no running backs is the look. Stanton with time, going deep middle. Scott dropped it at the 46-yard line. He had it in the old bread basket, and he'd have been off to the races. Sure would have been. Grant Mason was on coverage that time. Number 13 waved at the ball, but didn't hit it. And Scott dropped it. That could have been huge. Mason was there, but just missed the play corner route to the outside you see Mason one on one all the way looks back the balls to watch Mason weave at it miss it and it's dropped Brandon Fields in the punt again low line drive Leon Hall has replaced the injured Preston today as the punt returner holds on to the ball and goes down at the 46 yard line the Wolverines with a seven point lead and they have possession back. Well, you look down at these uh, beautiful aerial shots, courtesy of our friends at Outback Steakhouse. Proud sponsor of the Outback Bowl. The Outback Steakhouse airship, the Bloomin' Onion One, provides coverage for sporting events across the country. And, uh, man, when we were over at Champs last night watching that baseball game, did we have a Bloomin' Onion? Uh, they don't no, have we didn't grab one of No, we didn't. We got a cross promotion there. <laughs> uh, I think this is the most important series for the Michigan State defense all football game. Early Michigan's defense answered the call after the turnover. Right now, Michigan State must stop this drive. Paul is still the fullback. And Hart, who has been the workhorse here today, is just short of the 50-yard line. And Pecco making the stop. And, of course, many of you will see the Trojans against Arizona State. Some are saying this could be the big test for USC. We shall see. The rest of your regional coverage down there, Iowa State against Nebraska. What do you are, make of are, that one? Oh, I, I was going, are they playing Arizona State or the Arizona Cardinals that this is such a big game for? <laughs> Second down. Just short of the uh, of the first down, Carl Tab, number 17, who was the motion that, receiver that time. That's that rub off play that Michigan runs so many times in a football game. Put the receiver in a little motion, cross a couple people, have them turn around eight nine yards, throw a strike right at him. Now you would expect Mike Hart to saddle up on this play behind the fullback, and they would look for the first down. Here's your play. 
got it behind the right side of that Michigan offensive line. They came in behind Ruben Riley and Matt Lintz over there for the first down. Chains will move. And Mike Hart today, folks, 23 carries, 171 yards, and a touchdown coming off the injured list. What a great dive for that touchdown. Still don't understand how he kept his knees off the ground as he was going down. And remember, on the pass to Manningheim, they faked it to Hart for the play-action pass. Better than 800 yards in this game. Henny sets the screen through it in the ground because Hart was covered. That was a good decision by Chad Henney that time because Hart had one-on-one -on -one coverage and was going nowhere. Clifton Ryan, number 92, smelled that out. You could see when you play Michigan, you must be ready for the receiver screen and running back screen. And this time, as Henney throws it away, Michigan State was all over that play. The John L. Lost an assistant coach here at Michigan State to Michigan. And they were concerned about the information that he took over there with them. And the Wolverines have done a good job against the Spartans in this game. So they debriefed him very well. Pass is complete to the 36 yard line. You see on the far side, there are three dummy signal callers for Michigan as we come to the top of the hour. And uh, with Gary Daniels and Jack Root, there they are right there. Now, only one of them is hot. And Gutierrez, one in the middle of that combination. So you are led to believe that that assistant coach said, you better have a couple of dummy signal callers when you go up to East Lansing. Not thinking of conspiracy, folks, but I am struck by that on the other side. Short drop, Henny, Avon's hands. Avon crashes to the 25, first and 10, Michigan. It seems so easy. Run Hart. Throw the quick passes. Keep Michigan State completely off balance with the quick game. Don't allow the blitz package to get to you. Get it out in the hands of your receivers. You don't need seven-step drops. You don't have to drop back and put Henny in any peril. Just get it in and out of his hands quickly. And there is Ahmad out of Chicago. Averaged 16 points a game. That was Carver High School. Another great Michigan player came out of there by the name of Kazi Russell. Basketball player that uh, I'm sure Wolverine fans well remember. Coming up to uh, Ann Arbor and then going on to stardom in the uh, National Basketball Association. This drive could be lethal in this game. Look at the clock winding down. We're halfway down through that fourth quarter right now. Michigan is up by seven. They stopped Michigan State on that long drive. Lloyd Carr and his staff are patiently eating up the seconds, bringing it back down right now. Trying to take as much time off the clock as they can with a seven-point lead. Kevin Grady and timeout Henny. Henny will call timeout. Just remember a year ago, in the last eight minutes of the game, there were a lot of points scored. Can they do it again? Hey, we're, I'm looking for Braylon Edwards. I don't, <laughs> I don't he see down him there? down there. Is he down there? You know, maybe this is a little bit different. Lloyd talking to his offense. Welcome those of you who watched Texas pull away from Missouri in the Big 12. Here we are in the Big 10, an important game with unbeaten Michigan State against twice beaten Michigan. Wolverines came in as a rare underdog against their interstate rival, but Chad Henney and the Wolverines put it in the end zone on their first possession. Went up by 14. Then the Spartans scored. The Wolverines again, it became 21-7 before Michigan State tied it. Deadlocked at 24 early in the second half, but then John L. Smith's offense was stalled inside the 10 yard line, and the Wolverines marched down for the go ahead touchdown. And Chad Henney now 25 of 33 for 250, three touchdowns and an interception, second down to 10. So that gets you up to date with Jack Aroot and Brent Musburger. <laughs> I'm not Gary Daniels. <laughs> Take over here, Gary. Well, they had to stop the clock because the dog was out on the field. 
as Henning steps away from Bazemore and throws it away. The heat was coming. Great coverage that time. That's the first time that Michigan State secondary completely took away any lane for Henning to throw the football to. John Hill with a big uh, smile on his face. He's got to complain a little bit about where that ball was thrown from. He's in the box. He's saying, "Don't you understand that? That's intentional grounding." <laughs> Third down. Coming down to seven minutes. Big third down for the Spartan defense. Can they hold on the corners? And he is hit. Ball loose. It's going to be a roll. Fumble picked up. Paco's got it. Down the sideline. The big fella from Samoa. Rumbling for a tying touchdown. Take it home. Big fella does it. Yeah, the big fella. Force Chad headed to pull the ball down one time, and when he pulls it down, big, big Clifton Ryan, number 92, made the play, and Pecco takes it with a convoy of blocks in front of him. They clear the way, and Pecco dives it into the end zone. One time All-American out of the California JC system. I'm going to review it. And he was ranked among the nation's top 50 Juco players by College Football News. And uh, Lloyd is saying they got to be taking another look at this. Is the arm it. coming forward? Here we are. Big decision. That's going to be a very tough call. Sure is. His that, arm was coming forward, but he was trying not to throw the ball. That's going to be an interesting call. And what's interesting is this crew had a similar call last week turned over. OK. And the same replay official Jimmy Augustine turned it over and now he faces a similar difficult call upstairs in the replay booth. There's no doubt that Clifton Ryan hits him before he ball goes forward but the ball continues to go forward after he gets hit. I think Henny, my own opinion is Henny was attempting to wrap the ball up when Ryan hit him, and this will be called a fumble. However, I'm not the official. I got nothing to do with it. The arm definitely was coming forward, as Gary points out. There is no question. But the issue is there is not a tuck rule per That's se correct. in That's, the college game. That is so, the that That's is the, the tuck thing. rule if Absolutely. it has it. That is it. This is the best example of it I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Kenny was not trying to throw the ball. He was trying to stop from throwing the ball. Now, I want you, you're home. You make up your mind. You vote on this. Was Henny trying to tuck it away, or was he still looking? For you make the call. We're just going to be quiet, and you watch it. Is it indisputable? Seems to me like his hand is going forward when the ball with the ball in his hand. That's what I see. Indisputable now. That's the key word. Is the ball in his hand? Is it moving forward? Uh, I, and and but there is no tuck rule. This is very interesting. I, I frankly I don't know which way this is going to go. Uh, I really don't. You know I would not want to be making this call. I mean either. It's a huge call in the game too. Because Clifton Ryan gets to him when the ball's behind him, but it continues to go forward. There is Jim Augustine, who has the toughest call of the day to make. Take your time, Jimmy. Yeah. It's a big putt. We're not going anywhere. Right. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the money call, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Time permitting the thrifty car rental postgame report. 
we, and we, I dare say we're eating into that time limit right, right now, John. But uh, this is critical in this football game. Remember that was third down. So even if it was reviewed overturned, it would be a field goal situation for Michigan. After further review, it was a fumble. Touchdown. There it is. They are an extra point away. And the fellow from American Samoa has taken it to the house. These Michigan Michigan State games never end. <laughs> they just keep going. <laughs> we still got clock problems. We've got a lot of stuff to go with. Don't leave this game. <laughs> 74 <laughs> yards. 320 pound defensive lineman. And Kyle Mayer came in to kick that extra point. So the backup kicker deadlocks it at 31, and we'll check carefully who kicks off. What a football game. Good. So Chad Henney hit by Ryan, their best defensive lineman. And Pecco, the 320 pounder from American Samoa, takes a, and folks, watch him hurdle over Hart. Look at the big fella, not exhausted yet. Go over him. Yeah. And Kyle Mayer is out kicking off, and I'm wondering if something happened to John Goss. Didn't kick it off. Oh, it stayed in bounds. Lucky for the uh, Spartans and Mason on the sideline brings it all the way to the 40 yard line. Uh, we'll have Jack Aroot check on uh, the John Goss situation because that's pretty unusual. So we'll take a break and be right back. We've got another instant classic brewing here in East Lansing. 31 all sellout crowd. Weather has been beautiful this football weekend here in the Midwest. Chad Henney, the comparison, again, having some problems in the second half. Good field position on the Wolverine 40-yard line. Hart on first down to the 44. And Gary, our Pacific Life game summary regarding Henney. Well, let's talk about the second half. Of course, this one's to Ecker in the corner of the end zone that uh, set it up. Uh, Jason Avon, sure, for the touchdown pass. But in the second half, interception that set up a field goal for Michigan State and of course this big fumble and that time on second and third down Michigan State's secondary forced Chad Henney not to be successful. A star is born in East Lansing. Second down. Hart. First down. What a tough runner he's been and we check in with John in New York. Brent and the singular All-America Player of the Week update. How about Marcus Vick? 15 of 17, 173 yards and two touchdowns through the air. Also ran for 74 yards and a touchdown. Text vote to 87654 now on your singular phone for your ballot and a chance to win a trip to the national championship. Brent. And John Pecco just received polite applause. Only a few noticed he's back on the field and Hart gets away from him. And makes it to the 41-yard line on that first down run. And Sir Darian Adams, the uh, bandit linebacker for the Spartans, makes the stop. Deadlocked at 31, coming down toward uh, the five-minute mark. You wonder if uh, Michigan might be feeling that uh, Chad Henney second-half woes because they're riding Hart right now. They're, this is obvious. They've handed this game to Mike Hart and that Michigan offensive line. They're not trying to attack like they were in the first half. Mike Hart is closing in on 200 yards. And remember, a year ago, he ran for 224 yards. Here he comes again, short of the first down. And uh, we get word down below that uh, when Goss missed that field goal, John L. Smith just decided to change kickers, that there's no, no injury situation. And that's why Mayer uh, kicked the extra point and kicked off. And there is Hart with 192 yards. Uh, getting a breather on that far side. So Kevin Grady on third down and short here for the Wolverines. Four and a half minutes.
Brady. Hangs for the first down. See where that ball is spotted. This is going to be very, very tight. If you look at that official, it looks to be a little bit short there. Yeah, it but does. Let's see where, tape where he spotted it. And that's maybe the biggest defense in this Michigan State team from a year ago. They're much deeper, more players up front, and much stouter than they were a year ago at that defensive line. Would you make this four down territory with uh, 408 to go? Boy, that is a good it? question. You know, Lloyd's making a million and a half a year, and I'm not. But I, I think I got to go for this one, to tell you the truth. If you're going to win at Michigan State with Drew Stanton, I got to go for it if I'm short by inches. Chad Henney straight ahead behind the middle of the line. I think that's what I would do. Sure. Got to go for it. Now, remember, Chad Henney fumbled the quarterback sneak against Notre Dame. That might have cost him a football game. Mike Hart back on the field. He's rushed for 192 yards, but when you risk a handoff here. Mike Hart has never fumbled. Once in his career, he's had a fumble. You slow down the play, you allow defensive penetration when you're in short yardage like this. It's much quicker for the quarterback to go right behind the middle of the offensive line. Fumble is not an issue with Hart, never has been. And he's straight ahead for the first down. Well, the IBM Star Watch today, the return of Mike Hart. Well, we talked about it. 200 yard rushers in this football game. It's been done the last two times here. Last year he did it, and now closing in on 200 in this football game. We talked about all this fancy passing. But it usually comes down who can run the ball the best that wins it. Right now, Michigan looks like they're going to try to run the ball and win the game with Hart. Michigan with one timeout remaining. Hart cuts back. Stopped just short of the 30-yard line. The advantage of using Hart and trying to win it that way is the clock continues to run, and you don't give the Spartans too much time. They have all three of their timeouts. And the Wolverine defense is getting a well big rest over there on that far side. Second down for the Wolverines. They need about six yards here. And Hart breaks the first tackle, but he is short of the first down. So it'll be third down. And the clock continues to count down with Thornhill and McKinney. Yeah, McKinney had him by the shirt that time, holding on for all he could as Mike Hart just keeps those legs going and moving and churning. The guy just never stops. Cars, Michigan staff working on the clock, bringing it down. Deadlocked at 31. Mike Hart reminds me of one of those old time backs, the Archie Griffin type guys that just keep running and churning and going. Hart short of the first down. Here comes another fourth down for Michigan. So Carr can decide on the field goal now or elect to go for the first down. This one's going to be a little longer, more than just inches. This is going to be like a half a yard short. Remember, they've only got one timeout remaining on that Michigan side. I'm surprised line. Michigan State doesn't take a timeout here. Side of two minutes. They're going to run it down all the way to the end. And it looks like Michigan's going to take a timeout. Hayes Moore replaces uh, defensive end for State, and there it is. See, if I'm Michigan State there, I don't let them eat that time up right there. Michigan. Minute and a half to go. And we're deadlocked at 31 in East Lansing. Deadlocked at uh, at 31. The board now showing officially Michigan with one timeout. They may try to uh, draw him offside with a hard count. Henny's hard count is pretty good. Revis is ready in case they send him out there. Let's see Henny can quarterback sneak. They can do whatever they want here. 
They're going to run hard for the first down. Breaks for, oh, he was almost headed for the end zone, but Eric Smith, the safety, hanging on. They're inside the 20, and that sets it up now for the Wolverines to use up the clock and move on down for a shorter field goal. A little goal. too long to try the quarterback sneak, and that Michigan offensive line, that was power O. Lead back, outside guard, pulling around. That's football 101, Michigan football 101 right up. Another 200-yard running game by a player in this game at East Lansing. Looking for more. Michigan State must start using their timeouts right now. Coming down toward 105. And John L's defense will be under the gun here. We'll take a timeout. A high scoring wide open first half and then it's settled down here in the second half as Michigan's only score the touchdown that had him ahead for the time being the Spartans now their defense looking at a second down the clock critical at 105 Massacoy the tight end H back look here's part again to the 15 yard line and Pecco who scored that touchdown on a recovered fumble, making the stop. And the Spartans will use their second time out. In two big games now, Michigan State against Notre Dame, and now Michigan State in this football game against Michigan, no offensive points in the fourth quarter. That's what allowed Notre Dame to get back in the game and not being able to score on offense in this football game in the second half has allowed Michigan to just control the clock. Well, we have a moment. Let's uh, pronounce today's Chevrolet players of the game. No question about Michigan. The return of Mike Hart today. And, of course, Pecco, that dramatic touchdown run, and he's played well as a defensive lineman and a 74-yard touchdown in recognition of their effort. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Gary, you think anybody in a pile ever yanks that uh, that hair? You know, uh, Troy Polamalu, the strong safety for uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, once from USC, remember him the same way, has the same look? Hey, if you can run like that, who cares, right? Yes. <laughs> he lumbered now, down there pretty good. Now, remember, I, I mean, look at this here. I think you got to give the ball to Mike Hart again, obviously, right up the middle, no angle, as you pointed out, Michigan State's. Plus, you get the advantage that Mike Hart, one career turnover in his career. So safety first here. This is third down. This would be the final play before bringing Revis on. And Hart plows ever closer, and now it'll be time for Garrett Revis. Matt Gutierrez would be his holder in this situation forces Michigan State to use their last time out of the game also. And they'll have, uh, looks around 50 seconds when they get the kickoff. Uh, I'm assuming, of course, I'm ahead of myself here. I'm assuming that Revis can nail this field goal. Even if he doesn't, that's what they'll have left to work with from the, uh, from the line of scrimmage. So time is certainly not going to change. They're without any timeouts left, like Gary said, of course, in the college game, the first down strike stops the clock momentarily. Now, for those uh, of you who are awaiting the second game of the doubleheader on ABC, we're just wrapping up the Michigan-Michigan State battle with Gary Danielson and Jack Aroot. I'm Brent Musburger. And so far today in the red zone, the Wolverines are perfect. Four for four, three touchdowns, and a field goal. And with they want five seconds, for five right now. <laughs> yes, they do, don't they? Tied at 31. A year ago in Ann Arbor, they battled three overtimes. So the junior kicker from Tampa, Florida, has come on here. Be about 27, 28 yards, something like that. Make it 27. Gutierrez, the backup quarterback, checking to see if he's ready. Off to the right, he slipped it to the right. He missed it. 48 seconds to go as Rebus slipped it to the right. We have wide right in a game up in Michigan. 
Well, I guess you had to jinx him with the Florida comment, didn't you? I had to say Tampa, Florida, and that did it. You just have to mention that state, and it's going to be wide right. So you got to anticipate now Michigan State, with time to go, will probe. Can they run it down the field? I think they'll be conservative here and take it to overtime. Teague, he's the running back, Jason Teague. So they put the senior in behind Drew Stanton, the 6'3 junior. Drew Stanton, today 19 of 27 for 287. But like Gary said, inside of a minute, and here they come. Teague to the hole. Breaks it out to the left. And he's down at the 40-yard line. That'll momentarily stop the clock. And that may change their All thinking a little game. bit. All new ball game now. You're going to down the clock quickly. Ground the ball, get it down on the ground, and get out. And now you got three, two more downs to probe. Holy cow. 39 seconds. And there's a penalty flag, a pair of penalty flags thrown by the back judge. Usually that means too many men on the field. That probably. That's against Michigan. Yep, probably too many men on the field. Illegal substitution on the defense, number 94. Failed to get off at the snap. Five-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. Just a get me to overtime call right here. This is just get me to overtime. Holy cow, Michigan gets ripped and gouged up the middle, and then an illegal substitution by Michigan. Probably didn't get a guy cross the hash on the play. Gets them five extra yards. From the 45. The trickery goes nowhere. Oh, well, I don't like the, that call uh, at freshman all. Freshman ringer, and that is dangerous. Right? Yes, you, that, put, you put that ball down, absolutely. the defense can run into the end zone. Did you? not like that call at all. Only bad things can happen on that call. Michigan's in a soft zone defense. Michigan State outthought themselves on that one. Seconds are ticking away as we head for overtime again. Illegal formation. Not okay. going to count. It is not going to count. And the penalty flag is thrown. Michigan so. State lined up wrong that time. Boy, Michigan State is going to kick themselves. The Spartans shoot themselves. Remember the field goal when Michigan got an extra four points because Watson came and landed on Revis? This is obvious. Going back. Illegal formation. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. That's a five-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. The clock will start on the ready. The clock will start. You can see on it the right, ready. right there. Movement right there. Tranning goes back, and then somebody, oh, get up, you get up in this point when the ball is snapped. <laughs> Did not cover it up. Tranning took that basketball-sized step, and uh, you would think now, folks, that we are headed for overtime for back-to-back -back years in this series. Team. Barges across midfield as time runs out, and we go to overtime. Michigan and Michigan State. Last year, it took three overtimes to settle this neighborhood battle. We'll be back with overtime number one this year after this message and a word from our ABC station. Football on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Defense, or which end of the field we're going to play the first inning. Same thing, I've got a coin, red for head, and a tail. Michigan will call. What are you going to, what are you going to call? Michigan calls tails. It is a tail. Michigan has won the toss. They have elected to defend. Which end of the field? All right, hang on, hang on. Michigan over here, Michigan State here. I'll take the football. Michigan State will go on offense. Well, there you First see down. it, no sudden death. Equal possessions from the 25-yard line, starting in the third overtime. Teams must go for the two-point conversion after a touchdown. Overtime, Michigan, Michigan State is next. 
So it is first and ten from the 25, our first overtime for the Spartans of Michigan State. Teague is the running back. Brown is the wideout number three cutting back. Here is Teague into the heart of the defense, picking up about four yards. It should be about second and six. Burgess with the stop for the Wolverines. Very big advantage, as we all know, going second in this situation. If you're calling plays right now, Dave Baldwin knows I want to score, but I must get a field goal. I can't allow Michigan to come back out on the field only needing three points. Much more difficult to call plays going first than going second. Second down and six. Three tight ends are in. Play fake by Stanton, rolling hard to the left. Broken up at the 12 yard line by Leon Hall. And Leon Hall read that one all the way. The ball was thrown very late inside. So you square out this way. Leon Hall reads the play, knows it's going to the outside. Kind of a weak route that time by Terry Love. Just kind of fades it. Leon Hall almost came up with one. Third down for Drew Stanton here in the first overtime. Hall's double duty. Those of you just joined us. Steve Breston did not play for the Wolverines today because of an injured shoulder. So Hall also has been the punt return man. Third down and six. Can't find a man open. Almost intercepted. Oh my. Oh he threw my. it right into the hands of Morgan Trent. Yeah. A young corner who couldn't hang on. And Morgan Trent was moved over a year ago from wide receiver to defense. Might want to know why after that one because Drew Stanton needs to throw this ball out of bounds. He makes a critical mistake on this play and gets away with it. Can't throw an easier pick than that. John Another. Goss returns to kick the field goal. The holder is Brandon Fields. This a 37 yarder for the Spartans in the first overtime. Goss missed one from the left hash. This a better angle for him. Right over the top of the uh, nope. no good. Yep. It didn't look good as it approached the upright. Nope. And Goss has missed two in a row, and we are tied. And all the Wolverines need now is a field goal to win it. So both kickers, Revis misses one, Goss hooks one before, and now he pushes this one a foot ride to the outside. And uh, Michigan State is finding ways at the end. Michigan trying to get him back in the game. The Spartans finding ways not to take it. A year ago, of course, it was the heroics of Braylon Edwards. And in the third overtime, he put the Wolverines ahead on that crossing pattern pass from uh, Chad Henney. First and 10 for the Wolverines for the 25. A field goal would end it. Against the soft corner. Avon driven out of bounds at the 19 yard line by Demond Williams, the 5 9 corner on that side. You really have to do that. Michigan State, the Spartans have nine players in the box. One on one to the outside. Can't be any easier than that to just throw the ball out to the outside like that. Second down and four for Henny and the Wolverines. Hart. The 18, now it'll be third down. Coming up for Michigan. There's Revis hoping he gets a second chance here. Goss has failed his second chance. And uh, Revis, they're going to send him out on third down. And in case they miss, of course, and recover, they still have a fourth down. So this is not terribly unusual no, I like this strategy. overtime you I see like, it in really the NFL do. yeah I really the time. like this strategy Michigan's gonna have to take a timeout because somebody didn't hear about the third down field goal try no I think Michigan State oh was it really no, I don't think they expected it Michigan did not have enough people out there I'll tell you that they looked to the bench real quickly Spartans take a timeout so they'll talk about this situation Michigan a field goal away from a win Jared Rivas made one from 20, missed one from 27. This one's going to be put down at the 25, so it'll be a 35-yard field goal. Gutierrez is the holder. 
for the game. He's got it. Michigan wins for the second year in a row in overtime. And hail to the victors, loud and clear, for Lloyd Carr and a struggling Michigan team. As an underdog, they come to East Lansing and beat a game Michigan State team. ABC Sports Online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Coming up, don't miss the second half. ABC's college football doubleheader. Again, the score, 34-31, Wolverines. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television. So long, everybody. The kick is on its way. Long enough, high enough, Garrett pumps his fist, and Michigan wins in overtime! Coming up on Michigan Replay, Michigan rises up in East Lansing and knocks off the Spartans. We'll have the highlight. And we'll look ahead as we scout the run-happy Gophers of Minnesota, who are Michigan's homecoming foe next week. All that and more, coming up next. Michigan Replay with Lloyd Carr is brought to you in part by Pepsi, It's the Cola, by Chevrolet, Chevy drives the Motor City. See your Detroit area Chevy dealers today or log on to DetroitAreaChevyDealers.com. By LaSalle Bank, proud to support the University of Michigan football program, LaSalle Bank, making more possible. And by Big Boy Restaurants, Big Boy makes you say, oh boy. what you get a Michigan replay exclusive inside the locker room after an unbelievable 34-31 Michigan victory in overtime over Michigan State in East Lansing. Got kind of emotional in that locker room. That was a huge win for this team, wasn't it? Well, it was, uh, it was all that and more, Jim. Talk to me about how I, you said after the game, you said, and we heard you, you talked about how You'll never forget this win, this victory, as long as you live because of what the team had been through the previous week after the loss to Wisconsin. Showed some character, and they proved something to a lot of people with that victory over Michigan State. Well, Jim, they really did. I mean, uh, it's tough when you're coming off a loss. We've had a couple of them that have been tough, and uh, they, these guys just uh, continue to fight, and that's all you can ask for as a coach. We played an extremely talented Michigan State team. We went in and uh, played. On, uh, they played their hearts out. I can't remember a game either with the ups and downs for both sides, where you think you got it in your favor and then it goes the other way. Do you remember one like that? Well, I think what my take on that game is: that it's always hard fought. It's all. It's not always the best played game, but emotionally, and from an intensity standpoint, uh, it's it's hard to match the Michigan Michigan State game. Talk to me about your emotions as that kick finally went through in overtime. <laughs> well, you know, I, I got as far down the field I wanted to see the back side of the play. And, You're still uh, coaching all the way uh, to the end, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, but, uh, well, not really because I knew uh, Garrett Rivas uh, was a pressure guy and I was just concerned because Michigan State brought all 11 guys. There was some penetration. They got high in the air, but he got that ball up high enough I just wondered at one point if it was going to be long enough. Well, thank it, goodness it was. It was. When we come back, we'll take a look at the highlights. But first, we hear from Willis Berenger talking about the defensive game plan against the Spartans was pretty basic. Well, we just came in with a great game plan. The coaches just kept saying, well, we got to run through the ball, run through the ball, execute our technique, execute our technique as best we can. We just went out there and played football. takes you inside the locker room. A lot of guys stepped in there, stepped up, and uh, played well today. And uh, I mean, I just went through my reads, and whoever's open, I try to give them the ball. 
So this game, when it opened up, everybody felt the offenses would take control. It was going to be kind of a track meet. And the first half, it really was. And Michigan got off to a tremendous start. Had to be your best start of the season. Jim, uh, we came up with a great stop on their first drive, which uh, was critical because they uh, elected to receive the kickoff. If you had told me it was going to be a high-scoring game, I would have felt like uh, it was going to be hard for us to win. But... Uh, our offense played lights out, and our defense came up with a lot of big stops. Well, this is and, your fir their first series. And well, this, you didn't let Stanton hurt you with his hey, feet. You know, Jim, we had great backside rotation. We didn't let them outside the defense. Tim Massey and uh, Rondell Biggs there come up with a big sack, and we get the ball uh, down on our own two-yard line. And uh, this was the biggest play of uh, a great drive that allowed us to uh, at least exert some control of the, of the game in the first quarter. Nice to have Mike Hart back, and then you pull some razzle-dazzle where you put Antonio Bass in the game to take the snap. Well, that's a big play there. Third down and five, and Antonio goes in and comes up with a first down. And then uh, for a two-yard touchdown, this is a great execution of the fade. Jason makes a great catch. And uh, you want to go in there and try to get off to a good start. That's one of the things we talked about during the week. And we certainly did that. And here again, their next possession, you with the lead, you will not let Stanton hurt you with his feet. Well, we, he's not outside the defense here. I mean, he's well behind the line of scrimmage. But uh, uh, we get a, another stop. So the first two times they had the ball, we get the ball back. Here I thought Terry Malone made a great call. Hard play action on second and one. Gets the defense up in there, and he hits Mario Manningham for the touchdown. At that point, you've got a 14-0 lead, and you've kind of taken the crowd out of the game, and yet you know, I think, that State can come back. Well, we knew this was a four-quarter game, but uh, here, a uh, well-designed play. It starts to roll out to the left, but Willis Berenger and uh, Brandon Engelman, our two uh, safeties, I thought they were outstanding today. They get down in the red zone and uh, run the, the keeper, the quarterback, off the option play, and... Uh, now it's 14-7. Uh, 14-7 at that point. Then you get a big defensive play on one of their trick plays. Well, we had great uh, contain there, and Willis Berenger came up. Uh, I'm going to have some ball handling drills for Willis, <laughs> but I'll tell you, he stayed home. That was a halfback pass, and uh, uh, they made a mistake, and, we, and Willis came up with a big play. And then you go to Jason A. Vant here on another nice drive. Just at the end of the first quarter, Jim, we had very poor field position down on our own 13-yard line. And he, uh, Chad hits Jason, and we're driving the football. A great throw and a great catch here in traffic. There wasn't much room, for that. Yeah, no. there wasn't much room for that throw. No, there wasn't. But uh, here, uh, you've always told me to never take points off the board. But, Jim, I wasn't <laughs> listening to you. And <laughs> which, is, which is something that's normal. No, really. <laughs> but, well, I think, you know, I was concerned. You know, anytime you take points off and you turn it over, you lose an opportunity. But uh, Brian Thompson... Uh, who's having a wonderful year as our fullback, uh, made the catch for the touchdown there. 21-7 at this point. Then they come back and they complete two passes on third and long. We, our defense got uh, really good down and distance situations. Here he's got a little bit too long to throw. We're in man coverage. and uh, But we've got good effort, good pursuit to the football. Uh, during the entire course of the day, and that's uh, what I liked about our defense. Culkrick uh, runs it in from one for a touchdown, and uh, 21 to 14. And then they get the ball back, and they uh, make the biggest play of the game for them. Well, when you throw that screen, that flanker screen, and you're in man coverage, we were blitzing them because uh, we felt like we could get to them. They had the perfect call, and they executed perfectly. And Certainly that's uh, something you don't want to do when you get the lead uh, uh, towards the end of the first half. Well, here right before the half, though, and I thought this was an important drive to get on the board just before half and take the lead back. Jim, it was a very important drive because it kept the, the, the Michigan State offense off the field, and uh, we had an opportunity to get some points on the board. There's Mike Hart on a big uh, third down run and uh, fourth down run, I guess. And uh, we didn't give them the ball back, got three points. So I thought that uh, end of the half 
drive there was very significant. I think there was close to 500 yards total offense, both teams. Going to the locker room in half, what was your thinking to talk to the team about? Well, I really liked the way we were playing uh, from, a, from an intensity standpoint. I thought we had a lot of good tackling. We had done a good job containing Stanton. Even though we had given up 21 points, uh, I felt good about uh, the fact that our offense had had the ball, we had controlled the ball, and kept their offense off the field. We were scoring points. We'll be back and take a look at the exciting second half. But first, we hear from Alan Branch talking about the defense is gelling at the right time. We're coming along real well. I think we're finally getting the, you know, get the D-line, get the linebackers and the DBs all play as a team. We were all doing good in different areas, but now today I think we all came together and did a good job. Michigan Replay takes you inside the locker room. We weren't ranked. You know, we were 2-2. Two and two. Michigan State's number 11. Averaging 600 yards a game. Our offense, our defense isn't that good. Our offense is weak right now. We just came out here and we wanted to prove everyone wrong. We did a great job. I think that just gave us motivation. It was motivation. We knew we had to come out here and prove the country wrong. Well, Mike Hart did a good job of proving a lot of folks wrong with a great day that he had. But opening the second half, you got the three-point lead, and it didn't go right off the top like you wanted it, did it? It didn't go the entire quarter <laughs> the way you wanted to, Jim. And you you got to give Michigan State some credit for that. Uh, but we came out here, and now Chad makes uh, uh, a bad read, throws an interception. They got the ball deep in our own territory. But this is a huge defensive stand here. It may have been uh, the biggest stand of the entire day because uh, the momentum, uh, they tie the game up instead of taking a lead, with the, which they would have done with a touchdown. So it was a great stop in a tough situation for our defense. And, and throughout the quarter now, your offense isn't able to get going. And this is a huge drive they start to put together, uh, the 13, 15 plays or something, and they start moving the ball late. Well, Jim, there again, you saw good tackling. You saw people around the football. Uh, but they, the, they put together a great drive. There's a great hit by... Uh, uh, Behringer, who uh, played lights out in this game. Here we let the ball outside the defense, got to get off the block there. Uh, but it is a long drive, and I was beginning to be concerned about our defense being on the field too How about long. this third and fourth stop, though? Well, we got the whole uh, right side of our defense over there. Uh, good. Uh, we didn't get knocked off the ball there and forced them to try a field goal, and uh, that would have given them the lead. That is a huge turnaround right there. It looks like they for sure are going to get the lead. And then your next possession, Mike Hart makes him pay. Well, I think this is one of the real big, big plays in a game where there were a lot of big plays. But uh, a well-blocked play there, and we changed the field position. And uh, that's something that uh, uh, we have. We create an opportunity there for Hart to score a touchdown bouncing it outside. And, and what a run that was. Lost his balance, but was able to keep stay up and get in the end zone. Amazing thing how he leaped forward. You know, it's just uh, a great individual play. And again, here's a wonderful job by your defense. Well, we got a lot of people here. We miss a tackle there. Pat Massey, uh, I call him Tim earlier, Pat Massey. I apologize, <laughs> Pat. But uh, great pursuit to the ball here on a big third down play. Now we're uh, using the clock. We put together a great drive here. <coughs> and this is the most controversial play of the game. Is it an incomplete pass or fumble? Well, Jim, that's uh, uh, I'm sure when it's, it's, it's a difficult call, my understanding of the rule is, is in college football, if the arm goes forward, it's a pass. I, uh, I think that what will happen as a result of this, we'll at least have some clarification on what the, we do not have presently, to my knowledge, the NFL rule, the oh, tuck, tuck rule. rule. Yeah. Well, that ties the game up as Pico takes that fumble recovery as it was ruled all the way back, ties it up at 31. Then you go on a drive late in the fourth to win the game. Well, this is a, a, a major play right there, fourth and inches. Uh, Leo Hennigy gets up in the hole. Brian Thompson, we get a well-blocked play, maintain possession, and uh, force Michigan State to use their last two timeouts. 
and miss the field goal. And that's not very often this kid misses a field goal. And the emotions had to be way up and now way down. But you go on defense in the first overtime and you make some great plays. Well, you're, Leon Hall here had this ball in his hands for a second. A great individual effort. Again, we had uh, Stanton contained and, and kept him in the pocket. Here again, we got great pressure, but he's not outside. And Morgan Trent, he'll be thinking about that play for many years to come because I think he would have scored a touchdown. So we hold them and force uh, a field goal attempt. And their field goal goes wide right, just barely, but wide right. Now you have the ball and you make one play here to get eight, nine yards out of her, six yards, and then you send Garrett Revis in on third down. Well, uh, you know, I, I, the, the thing that never entered my mind, uh, I had not thought about being in a situation in overtime. Normally, you, you're down three to nothing or seven to nothing. But uh, I have a lot of confidence. Our entire team has a lot of confidence in Garrett Revis, and he made a big kick with great field goal protection. You can't uh, discount the job those guys up front because they the had 11 guys coming. And the snap and the hole. And the whole thing. Turner Booth and Matt Gutierrez. I mean, that is a team play. And... Uh, Again, you talked about how you were looking at the coverage and you were looking at the pressure and all that other stuff. But when that ball went through and the referees held their hands up, kind of what went through your mind as you were running across the field? Well, uh, you know, this is a special game. It always has been and always will be. And uh, to, to be a part of a game that was as hard fought as that and to have uh, a group of kids who fought their hearts out, I mean, uh, only a coach here or a player knows um, how difficult it's been because uh, we're all disappointed in some things and yet to be able to uh, not uh, stay down you know you can either when you go down Jim you can take the count or you can get up on your feet and fight back get up off the back. deck get off the deck that's your naval background <laughs> no that's my boxing background uh, the other thing it helps I think is confidence this team needed a confidence boost. This win, because of their good play, gave them, I think, that confidence boost. Well, Jim, I think the big thing is obviously the return of Michael Hart. He's, uh, he's such a great football player, and uh, I think he makes everybody around him. And, and you know, our offense uh, really responded, and our defense, uh, you know, I don't look at, you can't necessarily look at statistics anymore. <laughs> Uh, but the, against an outstanding, talented uh, offensive football team, they did a lot of great things today. Did indeed. And when we come back, we will scout next week's opponent, the Minnesota Golden Gophers. But first, we hear from Garrett Rivas and Pierre Woods about the winning kick and what lies ahead. I knew I didn't have another restart button to hit. Luckily, I got another chance. And, uh, you know, was, we had a uh, good operation. Everything was there. The defense made a great play. Three real good plays there to stop them. And... You know, I got an opportunity. Definitely gonna let down. We gotta come out and we gotta practice hard. You know Minnesota gonna come in and wanna run the ball. So we gotta stay off the ground because you know they gonna, they gonna cut and everything like that. And you just gotta be prepared for them. Michigan Replay takes you inside the locker room. We gotta enjoy this win tonight and then watch the film tomorrow and then start preparing for Minnesota because the games I've watched, they got a high part offense, and their defense is damn good, too. So I mean, we got to have just as much preparation as we did for state. So I'm hoping uh, this will continue. And, you know, it's a great win. We'll enjoy it. But we got to look ahead next week, too. So Next week. There's always a next week, it seems like, in college football. And while well, this is a great victory over Michigan State Saturday, back into the Big Ten, fires you go. Well, that's, uh, that's the way it is, Jim, when you look across the country. Uh, you know, every week uh, somebody's getting beat that uh, maybe wasn't the favorite or whatever, you know, so it's, it's a different deal. And you take on Minnesota, the battle for the Little Brown Jug, one of your favorite trophies in college football. Glenn Mason's got a team that basically loves to run the ball. Well, nobody, uh, very few teams will run it any better than Minnesota going into the game on Saturday with Penn State. They were leading the nation in rushing. And uh, Maroney is an All-American candidate, uh, a guy that's uh, got great speed, but he looks much uh, bigger and stronger this year. And uh, Glenn always finds a way to come up with uh, more than one guy that can run the football, yeah. and he's done that again. You, usually you think of Marion Barber, but now it's Greg Russell. Yeah, Greg Russell's having uh, uh, a wonderful uh, beginning.
beginning. He's only a sophomore. And, and as a receiver goes, Cooper's a little better throwing than they've had in the past. And he throws to Jared Ellerson, who you say has been there forever. Well, it seems like 20 years, Bob. <laughs> but Ellerson is a big play guy, and Pudo off play action has been successful in a lot of big plays. Uh, Steve Davis, the defensive end they got. This guy is a freshman who is making a lot of plays for him. Middle linebacker Mike Sherrills and then strong safety Brandon Owens are there. Three big guys on defense. Jim, I watched the Purdue-Minnesota game last week, and I was impressed with uh, how hard this Minnesota team played uh, against a spread-type team. And uh, so they're uh, a test. Where the, the little brown jug, as you know, uh, the oldest trophy in college football so we got I Paul Bunyan. If, if we I, got Paul Bunyan back home we got to keep the jug another year if I didn't know I know you were gonna tell me <laughs> about the jug I was gonna ask you how it was playing back in the or back in the days before that. they didn't have the <laughs> jug right the big thing and, and Penn State proved it if you stop the run and that came from a standpoint of how you prepare and look at beating Minnesota you've got to stop Maroney well, anytime you can take somebody's strength away, it, get, it increases your chances to win. And certainly Minnesota, uh, two outstanding returning uh, all Big Ten uh, linemen, uh, are, are they, they can run the football. They ran it extremely well against us two years ago. They had a big play against us a year ago. But uh, we, we've got a long way to go. We've got a lot of improvements to make. But uh, our morale will be... Uh, better i can assure you that well it should be a dandy it's the battle for the little brown jug next week be sure and join us right here same time same place on michigan replay michigan replay has been brought to you in part by abso pure water delivering quality bottled water since 1908 by sirius satellite radio by state farm providing insurance and financial services and by chevrolet chevy drives the motor city See your Detroit area Chevy dealers today or log on to DetroitAreaChevyDealers.com.